I'm trying on my new space language to go with my coronavirus uh, face shield and mask. This is how we'll communicate in the future. We won't touch. We'll just uh, put up a hand signal and speak in data. I think that's really, sorry, data. Sorry, data. Sorry, we'll figure it out this time. Uh, first of all, before I get started, I want a real assessment of my um, coronavirus uh, shopping setup. I need to know if you think this is, this is solid, if this is a good look. Um, because this is what I wear when I go to the grocery store now. This is, <laughs> and it's a, it's actually incredibly functional. Um, hello, fan and boy. Hello, Victoria. Hi, Patricia. What's happening, Carl? Welcome back. Emily, good to see you. I also wear a hoodie, but this is the primary. I look positively insectoid. Uh, from you... Knowing your love of space uh, and your appreciation would be great. Yes, it does allow me to move around uh, unknown and unseen. So this is uh, this is how I do it. Now these are uh, uh, this is a visor I bought a while back at a costume shop that I wore on stage with Zero One for a couple of songs um, because I like losing your eyes for a time, and then when the, when your eyes show up halfway through a show, it's kind of a nice effect. Um, I think it would be a solid Doctor Who villain, but it would, Connie, but I think it's also a, a Doctor Who villain from like, uh, like 1984, which is, I think, appropriate considering, you know, but uh, um, yes. Are you going to talk about models? Yeah. Well, not the, no, not the models that you're used to, you know, and not the models of Dr. Fauci, but the kind of models I'm used to, like. Model airplanes, actually. Uh, I've, uh, and I had to give it up because I heard sniffing glue was a drug and, you know, me and drugs. So I've uh, left that alone. So a lot of them just fell apart. Yes, I will be watching the the uh, thing today. But I wanted to clear up something from yesterday that that's what I wear when I go out. So when I go to the grocery store, I wear both of these things. Or a version of these, but always this. And this is a cloth mask I got. It is not medical grade. It covers under my chin like that. See that? And it does not pinch on the top, although you can form it a little bit. It is effective, at, you know, for this. Um, it's pretty solid, I gotta say. And it has two vents right here. And I can replace the filters in it on the inside. This is the kind you should get a version of for yourself. Order one of these. There's different variations. You can find them online. Amazon has a bunch, eBay, those kind of things. And they're really useful. For, they do. They serve two purposes. One, if you're asymptomatic or symptomatic, they keep you from spitting particles onto other people. So as long as you keep your hands washed, you're not spreading gunk everywhere. And then if you're walking around and and you're touching a surface, you have less, you won't touch your face. And then what you do is when I get in the car, I take off the straps like this and I spray it with, I have a little mini bottle of Lysol and I spray it like this and then I toss it onto the dashboard and that's where it stays. Does that make sense? So that's the, that's the plan. Oh, I realize I'm sorry, I'm wrong camera. So I've been staring at the wrong one. This is much better. Now, I don't have a green screen on this one. It totally takes the illusion away. It's very sad. Um, I'll put it back. Hold on. There we go. I think it's worth it. Um, so the, the um, that that is the key to this whole thing. Now the 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 Trump. There you go. I'm tired today. I woke. I went to bed relatively early last night for me, and I got up at five for no reason. I I can't. I don't know if I woke up naturally at five a.m. or the cat walked across my testicles again. It's hard to tell because by the time I wake up from the pain, they've already gotten across the room. So it is a very judge dread look. I will admit that, but it is good. I like it. Um, hey, we're hanging out in the twilight zone. This is very 80s uh, kind of a background as well. So let's go live-ish to the Trump 
uh, gathering, shall we? And we'll try to get through this thing together. Crime any. Um, I just turned you on. Okay. Um, robot mask man. I think it works. It wasn't expensive. Um, Summer got them for the entire of it. I know. I don't want to miss out on any of the lies. So we'll go to that. Oh, hold on. We, why did I shrink? What happened? Back up. I have a better screen than this. There we go. There he is. There he is. He seems confused. Let's back him up. I don't want to miss... Because I don't want to miss a thing. And even as you waddle in, you're scaring everybody with your body language. Here he comes. Oh, and he made Burks and Fauci's back out there because everybody gave him crap yesterday. You think he'll go... Duh, duh, duh. lumbering thank you very much i felt i feel thanked do you guys feel thanked busy time very busy is it is it really really it's a busy busy, busy time is busy time and let me begin uh -oh. he just got a he just did a rail by again expressing our support solidarity and love for the people of our great country Okay, great. I felt it. Did you feel it? Yes, everybody, we are on YouTube right now. Come over to YouTube. It'll be a lot more fun over there. We're fighting for you, and we're enduring all of this together. And we will soon prevail uh, together. Don't bring in the camera on him like that without some kind of a warning. There should be a barrent, barrent. We get a lot of progress. Uh, we appreciate all of the great assistance from... The governors and people with you mean the people who are actually doing your job sure in the states uh, the relationships have been really very good uh, as long as i kiss my ass i spoke with governor cuomo we're working very hard to get additional things to new york as quickly as possible things what kind of things you mean the 140 ventilators that oregon just sent them or the ones they just ordered from china with their own money uh we as you know we what what is the I'm going to wear the lavender tie. That will calm America down. Took care of the hospital, including personnel, the hospital, 2,500 beds that we built just recently. You didn't build the beds. You put them in the Javits Center. Jesus, man. It's including personnel. And we opened it up to COVID. And that's... Uh, so yeah, we know. That was yesterday and the day before that. And it's something they've been asking for for a week. You, you don't get credit for doing normal. Thing that... I just want to keep patting myself on the back for P.S. Do you see my lavender tie? We also did in Louisiana, and we're doing it in Dallas. So we have a lot of... No, because they asked for it up front. Not only hospitals being built, but now we're manning the hospitals because... No, they're FEMA sites. States... They're not hospitals. Are ...in many cases unable to get additional people to work. It's, it's just an incredible situation. Incredible. It's never been anything like this. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of things like this, actually. One of the most important issues in battling this pandemic is coordinating the delivery of the crucial supplies throughout the nation based upon the most accurate information available. And and we just stopped doing that. So we've got the best health care and disaster experts anywhere in the world. And I like the word experts. I like the spurt part. I don't know. X. It reminds me of spurting on my ex. Never mind. But he will tell you that. And we're dealing with big parts of the world and helping them also through this horrible situation. Big parts of the world? You mean the ocean? The polar ice caps? 151 still. Yeah, yeah another case. Yeah, right. And their numbers are going down, by the way. Ours? <laughs> Not so much. 151 nations are going through it. We're working to ensure that the supplies are delivered where and when they're needed. In some cases, we're telling governors we can get, get your own and go there because we don't think you need it and we think someplace else needs it. And pretty much so far, we've been right about that. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You have no idea. The peak is coming. You're not prepared for the peak. You don't get credit. <laughs> Jesus. We didn't really practice for the game, but I think we're doing very well on the walk from the bus to the parking lot uh, and into the stadium. I think we're doing great. And but we'll see what happens in the fifth inning, but we'll continue to do it as it really gets. This will be probably the toughest week between this week and next week. Yeah, really? You're going to, what, what are you going to take a bet on that? And there'll be a lot of death, unfortunately. 
unfortunately, but a lot less death, death than if this wasn't done. But there will be death. You, I felt, wow, I just hope that I have someone to eulogize me. We're looking for an obvious focus in the hardest hit regions. We're, some of them are obvious and some aren't so obvious. They spring up. They come they, and they spring up on you. They catch you off guard there, champ. They, uh, they hit you like you got hit by a club. <laughs> I got hit by a club. Look at my face. Can't this is the face of a man who was hit by a club. I have a, it's a policy of mine not to join a club that would have me as a member. An area that, but that would hit him in the face with one. What? What? What are you talking? There's going to be a lot of death between next week and this week. And it's like it hit you with a club and nobody can see it. Jesus. Well, bothered. You look at what's going on in New Jersey. The governor's doing an excellent job, by the way, but how that sprang up. Every it didn't spring up. You knew one of the hot spots was New York because it is the most international city in the entire country. Th that alone should have let you know that you should prepare in this circumstance. What the, what, the what, the what? Decision that we're, ma that we're making is made to save lives. Really, as opposed to, you're, you're, so, so you're not intentionally trying to kill people. That's what you're trying it's to- It's really our sole consideration. We want is to it? save lives. We want as few- Oh, well, yeah. Who? lives lost as possible well good it's therefore critical that certain media outlets stop spreading false rumors and creating fear and even panic with the public it's just they're not creating fear and panic dipshit they're just telling people the facts of what's coming up they're afraid for a reason it's incredible i could name them but Go ahead, do it. Try to name them. T tell me, tell me all about the people who told. Oh, it's the same God. ones, always. The same it's always ones. the same ones. Fake because news, they're looking for the, 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 the news, and the fake news, and the fake ratings. I don't know what they're looking for. So they're looking to tell people what their concerns should be. They're telling them things like yesterday you said masks, and then the day before that you said no masks, and then the day before that you're saying masks are a good idea, and then before that you're saying a mask, and they're oh, bad God. for our country. And so bad, the people understand it. You look at the levels and approval ratings, and they're the lowest they've ever been for media. It's so bad for, for our country, so bad for the world. You gotta put it together for a little while, get this over with, and then go back to your fake news. Um, anybody who watched the radio show earlier, uh, you saw the clip I played of his campaign advisor on Trish Regan's show, who can't be on the air anymore because she was giving out fake coronavirus information enough so that it was going to get the network sued. So they shit canned her show. And, uh, but we're, yeah, but this is fake news because we're panicking everyone. By the way, for the record, uh, I'm not panicking anyone. I'm mocking your bizarre orange face and your weird little hands and your stupid tie. And you're opening a press conference about a pandemic with a joke every time. During a national emergency. That's my job. Tell you what, you don't do jokes and I won't ignore a pandemic until half the country gets killed. It's just essential that the federal decision makers cut through the fog of confusion in order to follow the facts and the science. Many hospital administrators that we've been in touch with, even in the really hot spots, you know what they are, are communicating directly with us that their level of supplies are meeting essential needs and uh, at the current time, they're really thrilled to be where they are. Whenever local... They're thrilled to be where they are. Shortages are reported. We're asking states to immediately meet the demand. Yeah, you're asking states to meet the demand. And we're stockpiling large... You know what? I wish this asshole had run for governor someplace so he could have just screwed up a state for a while. Amounts... Uh, in different areas, in different areas, and we're going to be discussing that in a little while. But we want distributions to be made on a fair basis. We have to take care of a large country, not just certain areas of the country. Yeah, we know. Uh, but no matter. Uh, but what?
where we're, we've been there and we've been there very soon. You know, we went there and then we came back and blah, 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 blah. I want to thank FEMA. I want to thank the Army Corps of Engineers. I want to thank our military for what they're doing. Why do you want to? Why don't you just go ahead and do it? Um, why do you keep saying I want to? It's a weird verbal tick and it's always in this speech. Here's a good idea. Say, um, we owe a debt of gratitude to FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers um, for the work that they're doing. That's how you say it. When you say, I want to thank, that means you want credit for the thanks that you're giving. And we're going... Look at me, how nice I am, how magnanimous I'm being towards FEMA. To be adding a tremendous amount of... Tremendous and fantastic. ...military to help supplement the states. Yeah, medical <laughs> personnel from the military. Thousands of soldiers, thousands of uh, medical workers. Yeah, you're not sending thousands of soldiers. Professionals, nurses, doctors. And uh, it'll be a large number, it'll be... Lots, lots. I got it down, it's written, it's written down on lots. We'll be telling uh, them over the next very short period where they're going. <laughs> right, okay. So in the, in the next very short period of time, they're going to tell them where they're going. Mm, how about uh, New York and uh, primarily and Louisiana? And then you're going to have backup uh, groups in four different areas that are sprouting up across the country. Um, mainly, you're going to set up some sort of triage in Atlanta, Georgia, for all the southern uh uh, counties from there that are uh, hot spots waiting to happen. You send one down to Southern Florida where the cruise ships have been landing and where the spread came from those ships relatively early on and all through the Miami area. How about just that? And then California and Washington state will take care of their own. Uh, they're going into war because they don't trust you to do it. So they just kiss your ass and say, buzz off. Going into a battle. Yeah. Detroit would be a great place too, Brandy. That, uh, They've never really trained for, nobody's trained for this. No, they, yes, they have. They all do it. They all do emergency preparation shit. You have no idea what anyone does for a living, do you? What a chimp. Nobody's seen this. Nobody's ever seen this before. Even though Alex Azar said yesterday they've been prepping for it for 15 years. I would say since 1917. But uh, it was actually 1918. Which was the greatest of them all. The greatest, it was super. It was like Muhammad Ali eat shit. You're nothing compared to the Spanish flu. The greatest of this type of battle, probably the greatest of them all, right? 19 right, so good. So long time ago, it is so long ago, nobody even thought about this shit anymore. 17, up to 100 million people were killed. Worldwide. In addition, we're working directly with hospitals and existing suppliers and distributors to ensure that those with the greatest need are prioritized. Really? What a weird way to go. And that need changes. One day it's one state or one locale, one city. And it doesn't change. It's spreading, dipshit. Then all of a sudden... I don't understand how, th how water works. I understand. Okay, so if I leave the faucet on in the kitchen, first the kitchen get wet, gets wet, and then all of a sudden the living room is wet too. I never saw that coming. Jesus Christ, man. Sudden they're starting to do well. And then it, no one's starting to do well. We had some very good reports coming out of the state of Washington, coming out of uh, various parts of California. Yeah. Gee, who runs California and Washington state? What are the governors of those states? What party do they belong to? So areas that we were getting ready to really hit hard, we can now go to other areas. Uh, it looks like New York is going to be hit very hard. You think? And uh, it might be because one in a thousand people in New York has it and the population is overwhelmed by it. Yeah, maybe. Louisiana is just amazing the way it just spread up. And everyone's doing a good job, but they're going to be hit hard. Areas in the country that are not experiencing large scale infections are. Can kiss my ass. Requesting supplies beyond what their present circumstances require. Yeah, they're preparing for something they see coming in the future. And we talked to them. We By the way, your uh, flag pin was made in China. Tell them and we explain it. And for the most part, they're good with it. Wait. I don't have anything. Go find it yourself. He sounded good when I hung up.
Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think he was speaking French. Is that what they call it? We think we're right. It's very understandable that officials would seek to get the most they can get for their communities. But the fears of the shortages have led to inflated requests. We have some states and leave Jared alone. Why can't you stop calling Jared? He's only got two hands and that weird appendage. Areas where they're just asking for far more. I mean, look, we had one state asking for 40,000 ventilators. 40,000. Think of it. 40,000. Uh, it's not possible. Yeah, we know. Because you golfed for six weeks when they could have started ramping up. They won't need that many, and now they're admitting they don't need that many. No, they're just going to have to uh, declare people dead and not try to resuscitate them. Uh, we're getting as many as we can to them. Uh, again, nobody's ever seen anything like this in terms of... Yes, they have, like, oh my God. And this whole, like, pre-smartphone idea. Nobody's ever seen the internet get so slammed. Ventilators in terms of protective equipment and uh, uniforms and... Yeah, because when, in 1918, there was no such thing as a, a, a computerized ventilator. Outfits but it makes it more difficult for distributors to prioritize the real need. And it could intentionally- Instead of those big fakers. And, you know, look, they, they have, everybody has- Everybody wants to stay alive, like a bunch of assholes. Upper intentions, but they want to make sure they're 100%. And sometimes when they know they don't need it, they want it anyway. They don't need it currently. They're looking at the projection. They know they don't have enough. It gives them that extra feeling of satisfaction. But no, they it's not satisfaction. There's the IMHE website shows every state is going to be short of ventilators by at least 50 on the smallest scale, and in some cases 500, even if they get the additional ones you're sent. Oh we my just God. People just, these ventilators, they're the hot thing. You know what I mean? They're like the new Taylor Swift album. Can't do that. It's not even possible to- Not even possible. Just get get a bunch of my pillows and start holding them over the weak ones. Think about it. And that's why, and we're a backup. You're not the backup. And by the way, remember how much offense he took at the Tom Brady comment? Remember, we're a backup. We're, we're the backup. I'm not even- I'm second string over here. We're the greatest backup that ever existed for- No, apparently you're not. What is the greatest backup? Hey guys, this is my backup band. I just signed them last night, but they know everything. Guys, uh, do uh, uh, do uh, one one for the money. We're gonna do that right off at the top. Okay, one, two, we don't know that one. Shit, they, but you're the greatest backup band ever. I know that's what we told you. States, especially when we start getting into the hospital building business and you're not building hospitals dipshit they're tents into the medical center building business when you see we built many hospitals numerous hospitals you didn't build anything it's a tent you put tents up in some states and medical they're not hot they're not gonna stay the javits center is not gonna stay a friggin hospital these tents aren't gonna like these are good i like it who needs a parking lot centers that's why my administration's been requesting actual usage numbers directly from the states and hospitals to meet their needs because we want to be ready when... Actual usage numbers have nothing to do with the shit they're going to need next week. When the brunt of it comes, which is coming quickly... Yeah, we know. They're trying to prepare for the brunt, and you're asking them to give you numbers of need based on two days ago. You see it. You see it as sure as you can see it. And when the brunt of it comes, we want to be ready to hit the area that hit the brunt. We want to be able to give them out to the states that I need for re-election. Needs it. We don't want to have spent everything in one area and they don't need it there. If they don't need it, you think they're going to just hang on to it? I don't know. Hey, you know, we got a bunch of these things over. Why don't we sell them to Israel? It's anywhere near what? the ex extent. So let me be extremely clear about one point. We. Oh, uh, okay. Let me be extremely clear, is written on his paper, and it caught him off guard. Let me be, let me speak extemporaneously off the top of my head, which is a great head, and 
will move heaven and earth to safeguard our great American citizens. We'll move heaven and earth, but if we have to move a ventilator, go piss up a rope. We will continue to use every power, every authority, every single resource we've got to keep our people healthy, safe, secure, and to get this thing over with. We want to finish. Over with. Over with. What a piece of, what? You want to solve this problem? Like, I just want it over with. He sounds like the BP dude again after the spill. I want to go back to my normal life. War. We have to get back to work. We have to get, we have to open our country again. Yeah, dude, we're not even on the up arc. You're just arguing we don't have enough ventilators to pass around enough for everybody. We have to open our country. Yeah. <sighs> again. We don't want to be doing this for months and months and months. What did, then solve it. We're going to open our country again. Duh. That's not, all right. <laughs> I don't want to be talking about this shit every day. We need to open the golf courses again. By the way, Florida's uh, considering golf courses essential services. It must be killing him that he could be down there actually using it. This country wasn't meant for this. Yeah, it's not nationally closed. Few were, few were. What, 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 what countries? You know, a couple of countries, it's in their constitution to shut down for a pandemic they ignored. But we have to- We the people, in order to form a more perfect pandemic, do uh, agree to stockpile a bunch of shit and ignore it until it's wet and damp. Who put all the masks under the leaky radiator? Open our country again. We, dude. All right, this he, now he's rambling, he's off his tangent now. I just spoke with the- uh... The, the secretary in charge of opening the country. Commissioners, leaders of, I would say, virtually all of the sports leagues. Oh, good. Rob Manfred, commissioner. Oh, shit, he's going to name all of them again. They all came so, I met with them personally so they can all get a test. Oh, my God. The team owners are getting a test. Baseball, Major League Baseball, Roger Goodell, Commissioner of the National Football League. In case you didn't know. Adam Silver, Commissioner of the National Basketball Association. In case you didn't give a shit. Gary Bettman, Commissioner of the National Hockey League. Oh, my God. Are we moving on to golf next? Jay Monahan, Commissioner of the PGA Tour. I, got, I called it, you son of a bitch. Kathy Engelbert, Commissioner of the Women's National Basketball Association. Oh, wow. He, he, he put women's basketball after golf. Dana White, the ultimate fighting championship. UFC is down there with him, though, because that's it's just viewership. Vince McMahon, president of the WWE. Uh, I thought we were talking sports. Don Garber, Commissioner of Major League Soccer. Oh, soccer. Down there with... Are you saying that soccer is fixed? Steve Phelps, president of NASCAR. Oh my God, NASCAR. Oh God, what's it? Uh, uh, Orville Jenkins, uh, uh, leader of the Pinewood Derby, and... Um, Michael Wan, commissioner of the LPGA. The LPGA got bounced down past the... Oh. Roger Penske, founder and chairman, Penske Corp. And Drew Fleming, president of the Breeders' Cup. Oh my God, we're down to horses and uh, ping pong. What do I got here? There are a couple of others on, and these are all the. And I personally, I would like to say that it's a shame that the that EA and all the uh, online gaming guys aren't mentioned because, quite frankly, they've been ahead of this curve. They've been a bunch of loners practicing social distancing forever, and they're thriving right now. So, if you want some sports entertainment, uh, can I recommend some League of Legends? Great leaders of sport and... Of sport and, uh, uh... They want to get back. They got to get back. They want to get back. They got to get back. They got to get back. Uh, but... They can't do this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys, Should he should have given their phone number so we could all apologize to them for uh, fucking up their bottom line by having a pandemic. You bastards had to go visit grandma. The sports weren't designed for it. The whole concept. Sports weren't designed social distancing. Nobody has a field that big. 
Devar. You can't stay six feet away from some dude and have a good UFC fight. ...wasn't designed for, we're gonna have to get back. I can't be six feet from my caddy. The, the clubs are only two feet long. We wanna get back soon, very soon. Yes, so what? Soon. For example. For ex oh, good. Tell me, come on, spin me a story about somebody said, sir, we're out of soccer balls. I have to say. Uh, no, you don't have to. We're using the Defense Production Act. To make golf clubs. Uh, very powerfully. Very powerfully to warn people and not do anything. In some guys, times directly, in many cases indirectly, just the threat of it. The, just the threat of it is using it very powerfully. It's usually enough. It's usually but enough. It's and not, H you know, what are you going to do? Yes, have ordered 180 million. Think of that, 180 million. Who ever heard of 180 million? 250 million people in the world. In the, in the United States, listen to me, in the world. In the United States, there's 350 million people in this country. 250 million ambulatory adults in the, in the workforce or moving around or going to school. 250 million people. N95 masks. Who would have thought of that? Oh my God. Just because we don't have enough tests, and when we do get tests, you have to change one every time you do, and you got to change between patients, and people are having to reuse them, and our, our EMTs, our, every time they pick somebody up, have to change their shit, and cops are needing them when they have to deal with people, and they go out on these domestic violence things that are... Ugh. Who'd have thought? We'd have thought. It's in the friggin' guidelines. We're working now with 3M to see whether or not that all works out, but we want them to... Help our country. They are. They're making a bunch of stuff. They just wanted to sell some to Canada because there was, tr we still got travel coming back and forth in those countries, and they already had contracts with them, and they're part of North America, and it's just foot traffic. Oh my God. And uh, I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be great and okay and something good, but maybe not. We're going to soon but let we'll you see. know. We're going to see. But we need the masks. Yeah. Would you? Why? I thought we were out. I thought we had so many. It's hard to even. We don't want other people getting it. That's why we're. That's why oh. we're. Oh. Uh, what? Oh. We don't want other people getting it. Guys. Instituting a lot of Defense Production Act. Uh, you could call it retaliations because that's what it is. It's a retaliation. If people don't. If people don't give us what we need for our people, we're going to be very tough, and we've been very tough. We're going to be very tough, but we haven't been. Usually, we don't have to use it, but we've used it plenty. It's turning out... You're not using it. Oh, my God. More and more, unfortunately. More and more, unfortunately. Just use it. This is Mr. You're Fired. Can't tell people that they have to make masks and ventilators right now. And it's not like they not they don't get paid for it later. And it works. Very what are they going to do? Sell the other shit they're making? Well, our supply supply chain logistics task force, led by Admiral John Polovchek, who's doing a fantastic job, will ensure their district. He needs somebody to coordinate the like a quartermaster, and he doesn't have it because he's working with the Army Corps of Engineers and three different states. Did to the healthcare and critical infrastructure workers in the areas with the most pressing requirements. That's the 60 million uh, masks that we're talking about and the mm -hmm. 100 and 180 million N95 masks. 180 million, whoever. Whoever heard of a number like that? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Cops, firefighters, EMTs, doctors, nurses, cleaning crews, FEMA personnel. Army Corps of Engineers Medical, military medical providers. Why are you surprised by that number? Stop. 180 million masks. It makes total sense. Go find out how many we use a year already. It's a lot. And we don't have a pandemic where we don't know who has it. And this and is a... And you see what the incredible thing, a lot of times that we have to stop playing this game. Oh, it's a game it, now. It's a game now. All right. Yeah. What's the game? Explain it to us. A governor wants 200 ventilators. 
And I say, no, we're going to send you a thousand. We think. Oh, this is the old. If I send you a thousand and they still talk shit about me on TV. You need more than 200. And then the media meets with the governor and they say, oh. No one has gotten more ventilators than they have requested. No one. You got more well? No one. Because there aren't enough to go around. It's not enough. It isn't enough. The president should have sent more. So he's you should have. Asking for two but you don't have more because you killed the maintenance contract last summer and a bunch of them don't work. This is the same gripe. What a bitch. We give them Excuse me. Thousand. They say, how's the president doing? He should have given more because that's politics. No, it isn't. It's people dying. That's politics. And that's unfortunate because we can't play that game. It's not a game. And, you know, that's one party doing it and the other party's happy. But they're all really happy because they should have been doing this work themselves for a long period of time. Not the federal government. Who believes that the federal government should be able to do stuff? Oh, my God. You lazy, entitled, second-generation rich boy. Many of their cupboards were bare. Cupboards were bare. Now it's a Goldilocks story. Let me spin a little story. But the cupboards were bare. And so the little old lady that lived in the shoe died of COVID-19, and we didn't find her for a week and a half. We blew on the floor with just her cat. With respect to the ventilators, FEMA and HHS continue to monitor the data on an hourly basis. We're provided by the states in order to most effectively target the distribution of supplies. We've been asking states to provide us with daily updates on the they do. number of ventilators. They're providing to like 10 different sources. And their utilization rates because some states- They have them, you have them. Stop pretending they haven't been- how do I know how many things you, it's a big surprise. They have more ventilators than they need. They don't Nobody has more ventilators than they need it, that's in, that has an art coming. Oregon found out they had some and they sent them to New York. They didn't talk to you. They just, well, they let you know and then they sent them. I like to admit it. They'll admit it when everything's over, but that doesn't help us very much. No one has any extra when you don't know how many people in your state have it and you don't have enough tests to check. Much. This data is vitally necessary so that we can ensure ventilators are getting to the right place at the right time. You don't have enough anyways. Even if you had the proper data from everyone, there are not enough ventilators, period, end of story. No matter if you, if you prioritize one state over another, there is a point in the next week and a half where there will not be enough. FEMA, HHS, DOD are developing resources within the next 24 hours. They will have a whole different set of criteria. Every... Oh, great. So we're changing everything. 24, the next 24 hours, everybody... Okay, unscrew your head and shove it up my ass, Pence. Brand new. Every day, it's different criteria. Every day, it's different criteria. I can't keep up. I don't know what they say. One day, it's masks. Next day, it's tests. Ah, boring. Every day, this horrible, invisible enemy changes a course. It changes course. No, it doesn't. It does not. If you were fighting the normal fight, you know what's happening. Here's The normal fight. The normal fight. They hit one. They hit another. They hit another state. They hit areas that you didn't expect. But we're watching it and we're capturing it capturing it. What a bunch of ignorant garbage. Our goal is to stay several days ahead of the needs in each state. But we can only do that if the cities and states utilize real-time local knowledge to provide timely and precise data. Let us know exactly how many dead you have so we don't have to worry about those dead people anymore. About actual usage. So we have to be able to do that. And if a state has ventilators, as an example, that they know they're not going to need. They should give them over, and we should move them with the other ones. We have now 10,000. People are sharing ventilators. In our pipeline and uh, stuck. He did a fresh rail, right, like, uh, <laughs> earlier, you can tell. 10,000 close. And we're moving some into New York. So we're going to need some additional. We're moving some into New York City. 
and state separately. Separately? And we're bringing them to the point where they'll need them. I can also report that at my direction, 1,000 military personnel are deploying to New York City to assist where they're needed the most. That's the hottest of all the hot spots. New Jersey is right there. It's right next to it. Yeah, because that's where all the people who work in New York, in Manhattan, who can't afford to live there, live. And like the people who clean the hospitals, like the people who work at the hospitals, like the nurses and the practitioners and all those folks who are getting sick. I don't know if that's overflow, but New Jersey's, it's a great state and it's a very- It's not overflow. Oh my God. It's a crowded state also. <laughs> That's your, see, it's your fault, New Jersey. You got too many people. You got to cull the herd once in a while. Where you have people on top. You don't have enough shootings. That's the problem. If you had more shootings, maybe the contagion wouldn't have a chance to spread. For people, it's always tough, but uh, we're bringing uh, some of the ventilators. We got some for New Jersey just yesterday, and we're going to bring them some more, including doctors. I thought they, I, I thought you gave them too many, and they, they, mocked you because you you gave them more than they asked for why are you still giving them if they give if they got more than they needed getting doctors nurses respiratory specialists and other support workers these are from the military we're taking people now out of our military we've been doing it but now we're doing it on a larger basis and i want to thank secretary of defense esper who Cause for not saying no will uh, detail some of what we're doing tomorrow and monday oh good all right so there'll be more details tomorrow and monday but we'll see what they are and the whole situation is going to change and the details will change tomorrow. So everything you've been working on to try and streamline stuff, yeah, just throw that in the garbage. We're starting from scratch tomorrow. As the situation in Washington. As my dad would say. State continues to stabilize. Uh, we're returning a 300 bed federal medical station to a different location. So where we need it and we appreciate that. They won't be needing it, and we appreciate them letting us know we're going to move it to a different location. They're bre wait, they're breaking down one of the things they put up, and then they're rebuilding it somewhere else. We're the best. We're the best backup team you ever. It was already built. Many governors already built, and they're taking it down to move it someplace else. It's initially made large requests for federal support for their states in anticipation of a greater number of cases, but the residents of Washington State have done a really good job of following the federal distancing guidelines. They weren't federal at that point. You weren't doing any of that shit. Inslee put that stuff in place. They really have. Yeah. I'm also pleased to report that Oregon will be spending and sending. They're spending and sending. They're spending. They're sp I don't know if you know this, but uh, um, ventilators are now cash on the open market. That's how we all pay for things now. They're spending a lot of money because they really did stockpile well, and they're also sending. They didn't stockpile theirs. They're taking them from facilities that aren't currently in use. They, they, they took two out of a bunch of different places. They don't have a stockpile of ventilators. That's the federal government's job. 140 ventilators direct. Yeah, we know. She, she tweeted about it before she talked to Cuomo. They don't need you. To New York, which we appreciate. And I want to thank the vice president for the great work he's doing every day. In, in staying out of the way of Oregon, trying to help. Thank you, Christopher. With I am doing a, Chris, a really awesome, fantastic job. If you think I'm doing a fantastic job, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, uh, give me a thumbs down because I don't care. It gives uh, <laughs> the, the attention I get on YouTube helps whether you like me or not. That includes everybody who's commenting on Facebook who thinks they're owning the libs by slamming me in there. I appreciate you raising my Q numbers. Governors. It's like ratings. Ratings don't care why you're watching. They just like your eyeballs. Mike Pence has been working day and night on this and we want to- Mostly day. Get it over. He's got to get a little more sleep than he's getting. He hasn't been getting very much. I really? Does that affecting his decision-making process? Tell you that. Really? Yeah, maybe, you know, when people are sleep deprived, they do all kinds of stupid shit. Maybe learn to delegate, maybe delegate, maybe, I don't know, work smart, not hard. And we're all in this together. And it's uh, a beautiful thing to see how people are joining forces to help one another. They really are. They have to, because if they left it up to you, they would just die. 
In addition to our courageous doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, uh -huh. I also want to thank the incredible food supply workers who are feeding our nation. I spoke just a little while ago to the head, to the head of Kroger, to Senator Bozeman. You know Senator Bozeman. We all do. He's a great senator. He's a great person. We spoke just this morning, and we discussed yeah. how important it is to keep our farmers and ranchers, processors, and distributors in our nation's prayers. In, our, in their prayers? How about keeping them healthy? How about making sure that they, they have the medical care that they're going to need? And making sure that a lot of them, because they've been hit really hard by your tariffs and other shit, that they have, they're aware they're not on the internet or watching this kind of stuff, or if they've been watching Fox News, they may not know that they might not need uh, insurance to get, uh, there's no co-pays, none of that stuff. Like, they can get the help they need. How about this? How about praying for them is lovely. I'm pro-prayer, just for the record. But I, uh, I don't need to legislate prayer. I need to legislate help. And I want to thank the senator for the incredible job he's been doing. What, what has he been doing? What's he been doing? What incredible job? What's he been doing? Asking you to pray for the farmers? Well, that was a rough day. I'm all, hey, uh, call my constituents and tell them that uh, Senator Bozeman said, uh, uh, Trump said, I called the president today and spoke to him personally. Oh, that's wonderful. Did it, is he going to send extra ventilators? Because we're about 48 short in about another week. We're going to die if we don't have 40. No, 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 no. no. I, I just told him to. Ask the nation to pray for y'all. It was Senator Bozeman, they understand. <laughs> Golfing is an essential industry. I'll see you on Sunday. And a lot of the senators and congressmen and uh, everyone. Whoever, I don't know, whatever. Everybody's work. Everybody's fantastic job at this point. Can I just say blanket fantastic job and go back to my nap? Very hard. My administration is working very aggressively to pioneer new medical countermeasures to treat and prevent infection. Countermeasures, that's what we're going to do. Everybody, when you go to the grocery store, if you think you're near somebody coughing, they're going to give you a little lever to pull, and flares are going to shoot out the side like a jet, and so the germs won't know where to go. Can do a lot of things. They're going to do a bunch of shit. We must utilize our nation's scientific brilliance to vanquish the virus. The virus? The viruses? will kill us all if we do not know how to. We must bow our heads in prayer that the virus. We have to vanquish the virus as quickly as we can. Really? Really? That's a, okay. Did you bring that up at the meeting? Did anybody slap their forehead in this? Because we have a lot of things happening in really? this country. Oh, and guys, check it out. There's... A lot of things happening. And we have a great future. Oh, we good. Have to if you live. Back to work. This week, the FDA established the coronavirus treatment. Corona, the co coronavirus, that wascally virus. Accelerator program, which is. The coronavirus. Expediting the development of new anti anti. Oh, boy viral and other therapies. Yeah, slow down, man. Maybe, I don't know, before you come out, just take a look. Just glance over your lines before you hit the stage. I'm just saying. And they're doing it on a very rapid basis. A wabbit, a wascally rapid. <laughs> and I think we're having some very good results. We'll tell you about that. HHS continues to speed the development of therapies derived from human blood that have the potential to lessen the severity or shorten the length of the illness. Oh my God. If Hillary was president right now, this, that, that clip, that phrase that, that, that he just spoke would be played nightly on Fox to prove that she's a bloody drinking pedophile. Human blood. And as you know- You mean antibodies? Last Saturday, the FDA also gave emergency authorization for hydroxy, Chlor chloroquine. Dude, how many times? This was your idea. This was your idea. He, how many times has he said hydroxychloroquine? How does that not just roll right off the tongue right now? Jesus Christ. And, uh, and 
The hydroxychloroquine is a uh, — I hope it's going to be a very important answer. We're having some very — You're not having anything yet. They started testing it. You don't know. Good things happening with it, and we're going to be distributing it through the strategic national stockpile. It's going into the strategic national. You're buying a shit ton of it and putting it in the stockpile. And if we find out after all this is over that you have stock in the manufacturer, stockpile to treat which we will. Certain patients and we have millions and millions of doses of it. And it doesn't work. Uh, 29 million to be exact in addition to. Is that exact? That we're making. Brad rounded up. In it. And we're also getting it from various other locations and countries and- Really, they just lay it out. I found some in a bathroom in Tijuana. I think that's what it was. It made me a little sleepy when I tried it, but I really- One case I called Prime Minister Modi of India this morning. They make- Yeah, because they make a ton of drugs. Large uh, amounts of hydroxychloroquine. Uh, very large. Um very large. They're big pills. They, you cut them like a pizza. Amounts, frankly. I can't. Have you tried the new hydroxychloroquine? I, I buy it in bulk. One pill, the whole family just licks it and stays alive. And I said, uh, Do you make uh, Pop Rocks with Clorox and hydroxychloroquine in a suppository, cherry flavored? They had a hold because, you know, they have 1.5 billion people and they think a lot of it. And I said, No, nah. uh, nah, they're they have plenty. They were willing to dump it your way because they've tried it and it it's not, the efficacy doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, like some people get better on their own. There haven't been enough tests. It's anecdotal. Just ask Dr. Fauci. Appreciate if they would. A lot of people are going to recover and get out of the hospital sooner. And if you just toss a bunch of pills in them and you blame the pills, you have no idea. There is no placebo check in this. You're making it up and you went and bought millions of doses. Release uh, the amounts that we ordered and they are like sure take it whatever giving it serious we don't need it duration we're not going to give it to our people it'll give them heart attacks but they do make india makes a lot of it yeah we know they make a lot of drugs that we need and we should be making over here but we have already 29 million doses and it doesn't help uh, if you look i mean that's a big number great if we have a big if malaria breaks out in the united states we're covered 29 million doses. Did you how many? Did you guys mention, did he, has he told the amount yet of how much he ordered before the test was complete? You've got millions of doses that are being ready to go. Eight here and many millions of doses that are made elsewhere that are being shipped here. Great. Cool. Cool. So in case you had, um, you know, where do we get this stuff on the bingo card? And it will be arriving. Who cares where it comes from? We Does it work? No. Just hearing really positive stories. You're hearing positive stories. That's not how science works. And we're continuing to collect the data, but uh, I, I'll just speak for myself. Yeah, you are. Uh, it's been out for a long time. It's a, mal it's a malaria drug. Malaria yeah, it's been out for a long time. Drug. It's also a drug for lupus. Yeah, and people with lupus can't get enough of it now. And there's a... Uh, there's a study out that uh, people... It's not a study. Lupus aren't catching this horrible virus. They're not, they're not affected so much by it. Now, maybe that's correct. Maybe it's false. You're going to have to check it out. Why don't you check it out before you say it from the presidential podium? Check it out. But uh, there's God. a lot of very positive things happening with that. Super good. That's a game changer if that's the case. I'll if it is, it's great not going to stop this wave and anybody who's already sick it doesn't help them obviously we continue to work on the vaccines but the vaccines have to be down the road by probably 14 15 16 months would do there's next monday and tuesday two science groups are going to come out with potential uh, precursor vaccines ones that are not specific to this but that will help they genuinely think it's going to work um, one is a tuberculosis vaccine that has efficacy in a bunch of other respiratory diseases and they want to bring it back and another one is one that they've been working for coronaviruses specifically as a generic coronavirus prevention vaccine. You're going to start hearing news about that in the beginning of the week. 
and they're going to be online faster than these other ones. Doing great on the vaccines. I think Johnson & Johnson is leading, seems to be leading in terms of the studies. But we'll their, their vaccine, they say it's going to be ready by September. They don't know. See what happens. Thank you, Hal. I feel good about that, but that's down the road. But uh, That's down the road, and we've got it going on. Just down the road. We got it rocking when it's ready. Tremendous promise with with what's just been mentioned. And just say it. <laughs> you can't remember it. With what's just been mentioned, whatever that drug was I just said. What'd I say? What what what, what was the beginning of that? Into that Gilead Sciences has initiated a phase three. That's down the line, meaning clinical mm -hmm. studies of the drug remdesivir. Uh, excuse me, that's remdesivir. Now, it's approximately 1,000 patients, which is a pretty, pretty good study. Other drugs are also being studied in patients. Yeah, lots of them are. And this week... Because they're trying anything. Oracle. Fantastic job. Great company donated a new web portal. Ew. Larry Ellison. Donated. Thank you, Joe Carter. Donated a new web portal. Great. Maybe you know you could shove in that portal. That website Google's not making. Amazing guy. You know the one was uh, going to be online Friday from Thursday from Friday from Sunday. And platform to the government to gather real time data on how patients are responding to the various new treatments. And they have a very sophisticated site. And we'll be learning a lot from Oracle, and thank you to them. We're also spending economic uh, dollars like you wouldn't believe. And I don't believe it. Econ economic dollars, as opposed to what? Spiritual dollars. We are spending the dollars from the great beyond. Meeting. Uh, economic relief to American workers, families, okay. and businesses yesterday. Jesus, how hard was that to get out? The Small Business Administration launched the Paycheck Protection you, Dark Fate. Program to help employees keep paying their workers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know that annoying thing the Democrats insisted on? In 24 hours, the Small Business Administration and over... Why is he having such a hard time with the normal stuff? Here's a good idea. Don't work around the clock. Actually get some sleep. Put people in charge that you can trust so that when you wake up and get a normal briefing, you're clear-headed and are capable of dealing with this stuff. I'm not impressed by people who go on four hours of sleep six days in a row. Anybody, including Pence. 1,000. Not that I believe him, but you know what I'm saying. 200 lending partners processed over 28,000 loans. It's so far ahead of schedule. No, it isn't ahead of schedule. 28,000 loans, there were 10 million people that filed for unemployment. And billions and billions of dollars. Billions and billions of, yeah, I'm the Carl Sagan of, of welfare now. Uh, it's worked out. Incredibly. Very well, it's already worked out. Really well, and I want to thank Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase and a lot of- Yeah, yeah, what, I mean, remember when Eric, uh, when uh, Eric, uh, Edward Snowden told us that the choice in the election was between Hiller, was between Donald Trump and Goldman Sachs. The big banks that have been involved in a lot of the community banks. Mm -hmm. Community banks have really... All right, who popped up in the front? This is MST uh, 3K, I get it, but... Done it. And it's uh, so far going way ahead of schedule. No, it isn't. The SBA... There is no schedule. There's as fast as possible. Also clarified that faith-based organizations, including houses of worship, are eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program. That's great. Yeah, because they incorporate and they have staff that don't have to be believers. They can pay the janitors. As well as the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Fine. That you're familiar with. I'm familiar with it. On the are same you? Terms as every other applicant. Yeah, that's always been true. If we run out of... That's been around since 92, 94. Funding for the employee retention program, I will immediately ask Congress for more money. This is... It's uh, so ahead of schedule and working out so well that as soon as it runs out, we're going to ask for more money. Money that's really going directly to the people that need it, the small businesses that need it, and the workers that need it.
finally. I yeah. And that was the hang up. That's why Democrats didn't want to vote on it until that made sure that that was true. Okay, because when we open, we want to open strong. We want to open strong and big and we're going to open quickly and it's going to be over soon. With businesses that are going. Oh, okay. Remember, we had the greatest economy. I remember, okay. World. Glory days. The young girls. Uh, glory days. Um, so, uh, for the record, by the way, under Obama, the stock market went from 6,400 to 196. Uh, 19,600 under Obama. Uh, since Trump, it's gone up and then back down to 22. On the same arc that it was going up under Obama, by the way, there was no direct spike up, no, no change. Trajectory was just like that. It's almost as if the economy doesn't really care. Um, some companies get subsidi uh, uh, subsidies and other ones don't. And it just kind of goes like that. And then, you know, when his policies get in and you don't prepare, we go off. And then one day we were told to got to shut it down, stop it. Yeah, we know what happened, dude. We're in, we're living it. Tell everyone to stay home. Right. We, yeah, this is the fifth day of saying the same shit. Because same story. So this horrible virus. You call so it the invisible. That. You forgot to call it invisible enemy or, or, or scourge. And we did the right thing, but now we have to open. We have to open our country. No, we don't. We're not opening the country for at least till the end of the month. Does he not remember that he said till April 3rd? Finally, I can report that as of today, the- Finally. Oh, good. The department has successfully coordinated the safe return of more than 40,000 Americans stuck abroad on over 400 flights. And the unsuccessful attempt to do so to another 10. From 75 countries, many of those countries were terrific in helping us. Some of them sucked and weren't, didn't apologize and say thank you. And I So I left my, our Americans there because they were in greats. Appreciate that very much. Uh, some of them I had to call the leaders of the country, most of whom I know. And uh, once I did, they snapped like you wouldn't believe. They really helped us great. So I appreciate that. So we brought back 40,000 Americans who were literally stuck in some countries with no chance of getting out. We got no, they obviously had a chance of getting out. <laughs> the State Department's supposed to fix this when people get stuck in situations like this. Back. What, what part of doing your job is such a, why is it such a surprise to do the normal aspects of government? I, 400 flights, 75 countries. Think Look at, think of those numbers. That. And those countries in almost every instance had a big problem with the virus. I want to- Yeah, or why would you want to get the people out? Do, why were they, like, you got to get me out of here. There's a, there are zero cases here. Thank the American people, most of all, for the- I want to get back to the United States with the highest cases and the fastest death count. Selfless sacrifices that they're making for our nation, I know it's not pleasant, although some people have said they've gotten to know their family better. And they love their family more than ever. And that's a beautiful thing. They've actually gotten to know them. Yeah. Some of us can't see our families until this is over, dipshit. They're in the same house with their family for a long time. I guess it can also work the other way, perhaps, but we don't want to. Uh, you know what I'm saying there? You know? Ralph Cramden, anybody? Talk about that. Why don't we? And I mean, it's as useful as any other conversation you're having. Why don't we just, please, you know what? Just come up here and talk golf for a couple minutes and then piss off and let the people who know what's going on tell us what's changed. I want to encourage everyone to keep following our guidelines on slowing the spread. Sustaining this war effort is, and that's what it is, is a war effort. Is no, it isn't. It's a pandemic. And that's enough. Thank you, Venus Flytrap. Patriotic duty of every citizen. While we may be more physically distant for a time, we're closer together in the heart and in the spirit. And through this great national... Oh, God. The swelling. The emotion. This is just... Oh, I can feel the... I can feel the heat rising up my spine from the glorious words. Move over! Med, Med Gavinson, move over MLK and step aside, Jimmy Swaggart and whoever the shit those other TV preachers are. This is the moment. Here comes the swelling. We're unity is happening. We're having a great unity developing that a lot of people didn't think would be possible to develop like this. 
and we will conquer the disease and re that was my bad i called it wrong no it wasn't it didn't i was expecting a big that's my bad restore our nation to its full and Grace. glorious might we're doing really well and i'm very proud of everybody out there we're very proud of you it's uh, something that nobody could have ever projected yes a lot of people projected it your own Health and Human Services Secretary said it yesterday. They've been planning for this kind of thing for 15 years, and you hobbled it. It's been over 100 years at a thing like oh that. Oh, my God. We had H1N1. We had H5N1. We had SARS. We had MERS. We had swine flu, bird flu. They knew it was only a matter of time. This has happened. And the problem with this one is the contagion. It's so... Yeah, we know. We knew that in January. Contagious. Yeah. Huh. Nobody's ever seen anything like that where it's so contagious. Yes, we have. Measles. Way worse. But we developed a vaccine and we have one now. We don't have one for this one. Be if you were president when measles was around, we'd all be dead. Feet away and just talking to somebody and catch it. Uh, you can uh. catch it. You know how long it can live on surfaces, so. Tell me, tell me how long it can live on surfaces. What's the current science? You want me to tell you? Is it nobody even thought of the level of contagion? No, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx do that for a living. Azar wanted $4 billion in January because they knew how contagious it was. The Chinese were welding people into their apartments. It was so contagious. They had trucks going down the street, spraying friggin' Clorox on everything. Nobody could have seen it, never heard of it. China shut down an entire a city with almost as many people in it as, as Seoul, South Korea. So we're getting there. We're gonna make sure that it's over soon and just keep going. It's not gonna be long and thank you very much. And we oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Try the veal, I'll be here all week. That I'd like to play in the hits. Ask uh, Dr. Han to speak. O'Hara's treachery has disgraced us. Mr. Han, suddenly I'd like to leave your island. And uh, Polo, da! Uh, he's been uh, doing yeoman's work at the FDA. Thank you very much, Doctor. He learned that phrase just recently and he likes it because after he fired the. Thank you. I heard a bunch of Navy terms when I fired the guy from the Navy when they were yelling. Ugh. He's lumbering. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to speak about hydroxychloroquine and the efforts around that. Uh, just to preface, I'd, I'd like to echo what the President said about the American people and the resiliency and the... Yeah, we don't care. I, I, I... Just terrific work. We know. Everybody's trying. We're all making do. We're all staying home. We're all doing our part. We're all raging over the people who don't have enough masks and gowns and gloves and ventilators. Get on with it. Mitigation is such an important part of our fight against the, the COVID-19 virus. Mm -hmm. um, last week, as the president said, we issued an emergency use authorization to allow the donated hydroxychloroquine to come into the country and enter the general circulation. Uh, we are prioritizing this drug to come in for clinical trials, also into general use for physicians because, as you know, physicians, based upon their interaction with the patients, their assessment of the risks and benefits, can write oh, a This guy's just dying. Why don't we try it on him? Prescription for hydroxychloroquine if they think it's appropriate for the patient. Being a physician, we do this all the time. And that yeah, uh, but you're not dealing with a pandemic and a contagious disease. Assessment needs to be done between a patient and a doctor. And then the third- oh, like an abortion, you mean? Like you don't want the government getting between a doctor and their patient if the doctor wants to, oh. Portion is we wanted to make sure that these drugs were in the circulation. Thank you, Patricia. In the, in the supply- We just want to have plenty of it. Uh, chain so that people who have them or need them for the other indications, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, had them available. So that was the purpose of the emergency use author. Oh, that's interesting. So these 29 million doses that they came in are to make up for the fact that when Trump said, I don't know, hydroxychloroquine and uh, azimuth, uh, if you 
chuck that down their gullet, they'll live. And everybody went out and bought it all up. And the people who have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and, and, and are treating malaria need doses. So we just, they donated 29 million to make up for the ones that Jesus Christ. Station. These aren't even for the test. One other thing I'd like to mention is that we on Friday stood up a formal uh, convalescent plasma program. Um, we have a great deal of enthusiasm for that. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. We hope it works, cool. There are some reports that- Tom Sawyer, hey. This is a benefit. Is that the San Francisco Tom Sawyer? I hope so. Or is it just the modern day warrior mean, mean stride? Fit to patients in other countries who have had the COVID-19 virus. And what this means is taking plasma from patients who've had the virus. And they have antibodies and then we can give it to them. And then if they, if it does, if they do have the antibodies, then it can transfer, oh God. Who have recovered and transferring the immunity, the immunoglobulins, if you will, with the immunity from that person mm -hmm. to someone who's sick. Um, or to uh, medical personnel so that they continue to work without getting sick. We're hopefully expanding that across the country. The Red Cross is involved in that program, and I think it shows a great promise. It needs to be studied like other things. Like hydroxychloroquine, you mean? Or they created a, a, all right. But just like I said before, it provides hope. Um, we don't want to provide false hope, but definitely hope. Well, I don't know. False hope is better than no hope at all. Thank you. No, actually it isn't, because it'll make you cross the street with a blindfold on. I hope you make it. I think you got a good shot. Go for it. Tony, please, everybody. Thank you. Don't man. say anything that pisses me off, Tony. You'll you'll be pulled. You'll be benched for another day. Mr. President, I'd like to just take a, a couple of moments to uh, uh, talk a little bit about the public health aspects and how it relates to what the president just said about the need for us to begin to at least think about returning to some degree of normality, and that has to do with what's going to be happening as we end this week and we go into next week. Right. Let me talk about when this will all be over as I start to talk about how horrible the next two weeks are going to be. You will be seeing, and we should not be surprised because the kinetics of how this virus works, is that we're going to be seeing that there are going to be deaths that are going to continue to go up. Really? But as I mentioned to this group and to the general public multiple times, there really is a, a cascading of events where you have new cases, hospitalizations, intensive care, and deaths. So at the same time that we may be seeing an increase in deaths, we want to focus on the effect of mitigation is really the number of new cases. And that's what we're going to be thinking about and looking about. So we're going to pay close attention to that. And hopefully the kinds of mitigations that we're talking about are going to have the impact to allow us to begin to think about maybe changing a bit. So the question arises is, is the mitigation working? So let's look historically and then just look at, at, at the reality of it. Clearly in the countries, China included, that have implemented since very strict uh, kinds of programs of mitigation, clearly it works. In our own country, we've seen indication of that in Washington. Remember Washington State. Yeah, Washington State is different. It's spread out. People don't travel downtown unless they have to. It's not a walk around city. The weather is such that people aren't strollers. It's completely different. It's the first to get hit. It's great, they're doing it, but they did it because Inslee told everybody to stay home and they said, they said yes. But they, the reason why grunge came from that state, everybody stays home and noodles in their basement. Put in a really good program of yes. mitigation. And if you look at the charts that Dr. Berg showed the other day, they're still down there doing well. And the, so is California. They put in a very strict system as well. Reason is, again, what I've said before, but I think it's worth reiterating, that we have two opposing forces here. The virus, which is the one- virus and Trump versus humanity and reality. Do what the virus wants to do. Viruses transmit from people to people. When people are separated from each other, virus does not transmit. It doesn't go anywhere. And that's the reason why something as simple as the physical separation, because if you look at the vice for those of you that watched my earlier broadcast of the radio show, I went into this fairly uh, cleanly, I think, personally. I, I made it fairly clear. Um, if you stay indoors during the life cycle of the virus, it dies in your system. And if you keep all the surfaces clean, it doesn't have a chance to spread to anybody else and it passes through its life cycle. I love this, that he's doing this for people, but 
President's chart that he shows all the time here from this podium, every aspect of that ending the COVID outbreak in 30 days has some aspect of it, a physical separation, whether that's avoiding crowds, whether that's staying six feet away from people, whether that's doing teleworking, all of it does that. That's our most important tool. We'll be talking about vaccines and drugs and things like that that we'll mitigate later. But this is what we really have to do. And I wanna, I wanna actually just plea as I do multiple times from here to the American public, you know, as sobering and as difficult as this is, what we are doing is making a difference. So, we so this is him. Trump won't do a nationwide order. So Fauci is seizing this moment at the podium to supersede that and say, look, I can't do a legal stay at home order, but pleading with the public. Do it yourself. Don't wait for a leader to tell you because he won't. He's not a leader. He's the he's the backup. You have to take care of yourself like the states did. Really need to continue to do that. I must tell you, I was just mentioning to the vice president as we came in last night when I wasn't here, I went out with my wife and actually did a little power walking down Massachusetts Avenue. For those who live in Washington know what I'm talking about. And we passed. I love his little anecdotes. A cute little fella. You ever see him walk? It's adorable. A couple of restaurants where people were getting takeout food. The restaurants were closed to people going in, but they were open to takeout. And I saw something that absolutely made me feel really, really good. They were separating themselves by at least six feet. In fact, some of the restaurants had little things on the floor that said, stand here and then stand there. And I think if we as a nation pull together to do that, hopefully when we keep coming back here at these press conferences. If you do stuff that I happen to see people doing of their own volition, uh, and don't wait for the president to extract his head from his own crotch, maybe we'll make it through. We'll be able to show you that that curve that we keep talking about is- California has already brought their ICU curve below the line. Going in the right direction. And I'd be happy to answer questions later. Thank you. That he needed to get that out. I got to come out here and tell, he. that's the nationwide call for everybody staying at home and- uh, uh, which the president refuses to do, so he's doing it just making a plea. That's how pathetic this is. I'm glad Fauci did it, but that he, that he has no other recourse. Okay, please. And by the way, uh, the stuff about them being physically separated or them wearing masks and the people in the, uh, the press not being separated, all that kind of stuff, they're all supposed to practice separation or get tested now that they have tests. Allegedly, the press is supposed to get tested before they come into this thing. And everybody around him is, so the, the spacing that they would be practicing up there is really just a display for people to get used to the idea. It's meaningless in the context of this. And the same thing with all the bullshit about, are you gonna be wearing a mask? I don't wear a mask around the house and he works and lives in the White House. He's not going anywhere. If he goes out in public, and they have him wearing a mask at some place, which would be a good thing. Like if it was any other president, they would make a visit someplace wearing a mask. He's not going anywhere near the medical facilities and shaking hands with people with a mask on. Believe you me. Uh, you, you said earlier that the virus is springing up in air. was like half a mile from the boat when it took off. As you did not expect. Yesterday you said some states in the country are not in jeopardy. The fact that this is unpredictable, isn't that an argument for every state to have one of these states? I don't think so. Orders? Look, there are some states that are, you have great distance, natural distance, big land, few people. Yeah, but they have small towns and cities where everybody sees everybody, and a lot of them are kept afloat by national and international travel because that's why they can afford to be a small town in Montana full of rich people. They're in very good shape. And if there is a case, they can- You're not testing. You have no idea until it's too late. Quarantine that person or that person will be separated, will be brought to a hospital, a secure area. So you do have different cases as opposed to a New York or- Yeah, but you don't want people to get it in the first place. That's what prevention is all about, you jackass. Los Angeles, Los Angeles is doing incredibly well, by the way. But because everybody's staying at home.
because the governor shut down non-essential businesses a long time ago. Uh, areas where you have lots of people tight together, it's a big difference. So, no, it's a, they're different. There are many different cases. Yeah, there's a bunch of things. I don't really give a shit about some of the states. And a bunch of them are headed up by my redneck buddies who don't think that uh, you should actually shut anything down. They should just, you know, we should just cull the herd once in a while and the weak will die. Yes, please. And if they lose somebody else, you know, might be one of their competitors. Uh, Mr. President, you mentioned the military off the top, so a thousand troops going to New York, and then are we expecting other mass deployments around the country? And then is it just armies? Is it no, no. They're not troops. They're medical personnel. Yes, many of the places are really in great they're shape. Not sending soldiers. They're in, they really have done a fantastic job, uh, and we may add to the thousand, but New York. Why? If you just add to the, if you give him a thousand, he's just going to say he wanted two thousand, and then he's going to mock you on TV. We'll be getting why would you why would you need to send more about a thousand military people nurses doctors lots of other people because that's what they need yeah they don't need soldiers they're not there to shoot the sick and that's medical no no medical military medical military please sir you tweeted earlier yeah it might might be important right out of the gate to say that and not say soldiers a couple of times over the last couple of days. The day that you liked the idea of a second coronavirus task force that was focused on reopening the economy. Thinking about it. Uh, so I was wondering if you were planning to go forward with that. Thinking about were, getting a group of people and we have to open our country. You know, I, I had an experience. We're not even into the arc of this shit. The cure can't be worse than the problem. Is oh my God, he's back. Now we're back to like a week ago. Right? I started by saying that. Yeah, we know. Yeah, and it was dumb then. It's worse now. And I continue to say it. The cure cannot be worse than the problem. The okay. God damn it. The phrase is, the cure cannot be worse than the disease. If you want to say problem, you then say solution. The solution cannot be worse than the problem. The cure cannot be worse than the disease. What is, how do you not process the root of the analogy, especially when you're actually talking about a cure and actually talking about a disease? Like this is, this is the most direct analogy ever. It's so, uh, we gotta get our country open. Open for what, death? Reopening. Can you talk about your call with the sports commissioners? Did you say you'd like yeah, to Yeah, please. Tell me about the call with the sports commissioners. People back, fans back in arenas in Absolutely. I want, I want fans back in the arenas. I think it's, I think it's, uh, no, I, by whenever we're ready. I mean, as soon as we can, obviously. And the fans want to be back too, you know. They yeah, but they don't want to die for it. Like, you know that diehard sports fan is the... Uh, is a euphemism, right? You know that, right? You know they, they don't actually want to die just to see a game. They want to see basketball and baseball and football and hockey. They want to see their sports. They want to go out on... Yes, we all want to. We want, they want to go play golf. They want to uh, have sex with porn stars and pay them off later. You know, natural, good old red-blooded American stuff. The golf courses and... Uh, Dude. He went straight to golf courses. He didn't say watch golf. They, they you know, he's nice. They want to. Most people who watch golf aren't there present. Very small crowds. There are no golf stadiums. You watch it on TV, but man, did he go straight to the course? Clean, beautiful, fresh air. No, the. Can I can't tell you. Big, beautiful, fresh air. You know the kind where the oxygen molecules barely fit in your nose. I can't tell you a date, but I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. But. Uh, sooner rather than later. I think it'll be like not tomorrow, but definitely not 50 years from now, somewhere in the middle. And you know, we're not gonna have to have separation for the rest of, of our times on the planet. You mean our lives? We need it for this period. Or is he now part of a cult that believes he leaves the planet and goes to like, uh oh, are we getting alien news? We're not gonna be getting together on the mothership time but eventually people are going to be able to occupy those seats and arenas of course they were they did it after the spanish flu they did it after like 
every outbreak there's ever tuberculosis jesus christ you want to get the shit scared out of you go look at the tuberculosis sanatoriums when i did that thing with gary Busey where i stayed in the haunted house that was a tuberculosis sanatorium one of the nurses who haunts the place allegedly she was on the top floor where they kept the really crazy asylum people they had taken the asylum and converted it to a tuberculosis sanatorium she was up there she had been a little ill they came up and told her she tested positive for tuberculosis she got up from her desk walked out the door and jumped off the roof next to each other like we have like for, no coming back for all of my life and all of your life uh, they want to sit next to each other at restaurants sometimes you want to sit under a model they don't want to be you know six feet away yeah we all know what we want dummy you're in charge of getting it there quicker not wanting it open sooner and, uh, yeah. some restaurant man called up he said you know a restaurant man i am a restaurant man the restaurant man he's getting away i'll use my super fries because i have a small restaurant with not too many seats yeah that's what you say uh mr president uh i'm generic restaurant man you know me we talk all the time yeah i have a small restaurant with not too many seats yeah just enough Kind of the, yeah. What's the name of my restaurant? Uh, Goldilocks. I think he said 120. And he said, if I practice what this is, I'm down to 30 seats. I can't make it. I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's only going to kill weak people and we'll be back up. That's for know. a short period of time. Restaurant man, please listen. You don't know who you're sitting. Restaurant man, the world. All right. You'll be back to your number of seats we can't do that otherwise we'll be you're back to your number of seats thank you for inspiring me mr president can everything that means your stadium is half the size of what it was a month ago no 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 it doesn't it means the stadium's the same size but it's got half the people in it criminy they're going to be close together but they're going to be breathing air that's not infected that's not going to kill people please okay since you're not no killer air. I'm outlawing killer air. To pack the stadiums by August. What are your contingencies? Well, I'm not committing to it. I'm not committing to it. We're going to see where we are. That'd be great if we could. But, but like Easter, what I want to do is move Easter to August. We're going to be back to good health soon, in my opinion. We're, we're making a lot of progress. Plans. And we're making progress because... Because the disease has a natural arc, we hope. The projections go towards summer somehow eats some of the virus on surfaces where where the heat grows and there is an air conditioning and then it comes back in the fall and kills a bunch of people right around the election tony told the story about the restaurant and about how they were separated sort of automatically not automatically those people ignored you and drew lines on the ground people are doing that people yeah they are people are doing that they're staying in their homes they don't want to go out they're doing what they no is the right thing to do. It's it's not very complicated. You make it seem complicated. It's in many ways it's a very beautiful thing to see. Yeah. Beautiful. I uh, you could just see uh, we're going to change amber waves of grain to uh amber social distancing strangers. Amber's a good color for them. Is he plans for the Republican National Convention. We have no contingency plan. We have Great. The convention at the end of August, and we think by the end of August we'll be in good shape. We have no contingency, you know, it's going to be in North Carolina, as you know, in Charlotte. And I think we're going to have a great convention. Uh, I noticed, uh, I think we had an opponent, but I I almost didn't know who it was. He got 0.00001% of the vote. Yeah, because uh, your party wouldn't let him actually run in a bunch of states. Why wouldn't they do that? Why wouldn't they just let somebody, why wouldn't you, you know, use that as an opportunity if you're going to win by that much? Why not run against somebody? You know what I mean? Sharpen your tools a little bit. Like, hey, you know, it keeps me on my toes. Tell you what, kids, uh, when I run for president and after I become elected and I'm running for a second term, I'm not going to put a limitation on people running against me. I don't think, I'm not going to actually downplay the primarying of me by anybody. As a matter of fact, I'm going to insist on it from the party. Um, How do you like that? I really like that for a, for a promise. But I heard he dropped out three or four weeks ago. Because uh, he couldn't uh, actually campaign. I'm not sure. Maybe you could tell me. That's the kind of opponent I had.
And hopefully we have another one just like that in jail. Mr. President, this weekend lawmakers are working on the next round of release packages. What was not in the stimulus package that you signed last week that you would like to see? More money. Well, I think we're going to need more money for this. Mm -hmm. All businesses, it's been working out so well. So good. We're going to need more. We're, it was the best, not enough ever. And so efficient. The banks have been doing it. It went out so fast and it was so it worked so well before the before it even went out. It was perfect. Incredible job. I think we're going to need more money there. I think yeah, we'll see. But based on the first. You think. Uh, the first couple. N narrator. They did need more money. The days it's been incredible. Uh, I think that restaurants and entertainment uh, that would be include sports leagues, all forms of entertainment, go back to the original where they get tax deductibility. Yeah, what, okay. Yeah, you can write off tickets to games so you can send your buddies and write that off. That's such a, like, what a bro CEO BS solution to a problem where people are afraid to sit next to each other. Christ. Or, what they're doing and for people come in and buy tickets or go out for meals and corporations can then deductibility deductibility if we could bring two ducks it would be even better and people into these restaurants who are going to have a hard time otherwise opening in my opinion people wouldn't even eat at a restaurant unless you could write it off on your taxes those places are dumps and that could be the same for the sports leagues so uh... add that i have no problem with it it's not the solution we want to see for entertainment and for restaurants deductibility so that this is just a republican wanna thing it corporate what a douchey nations can take a deduction they'll send their executives they'll send people there and they get a deduction uh so what that is something that will really bring life back to the rest no it won't spoken like a rich new yorker well not really rich but you know what i mean Pretend rich. Make them hotter than before. You know, because they... a pretend rich guy needs to write off dinners. A billionaire? That's not the first thing they worry about. Just have it. And when they ended it, it was really never. Stay safe, Jill. The same. It was. Tom Sawyer. Thanks, man. Look at you. Look like at a sticker and everything. I hope you're keeping well. You, need, you and I, I need to do a stream with you, Tom Sawyer, about vinyl records. That'd be a good one. Never the same. Yeah, please. Mr. President, uh, you just said that uh, you want to see as few lives lost as possible. In this yeah, which is weird. Pandemic. That's right. um, but there are still eight governors, all Republicans, who have refused to issue these statewide stay-at-home orders. They know what they're doing. They're very good. They're excellent. They know what they're doing. And their states are, you know, full of expendable people. Including Dr. Fauci have said stay-at-home orders are the most effective way uh, to stop the spread of this virus. Yeah, but they're big, wide states with two senators and 95 people in them. So, so why not do everything possible well, and urge just right yeah. now yeah. to yeah. do that? Uh, we have a thing called the Constitution. Yeah. And it allows for you to call for a nationwide stay at home. You don't have to order it, but if states are expecting the federal government to give them aid in this situation, one of the things that can be predicated on is them abiding by the the stay at home order, at least attempting to tell their people they're not the states that are doing it aren't doing it at gun. Oh, God damn it. Which I cherish. Number one. No, you don't. Never read it. Doesn't know what's in it. Number two. Those number two is is the the name of the book about your policies. Governors, I know every one of them. They're doing a great job. Are they? Because they have pockets of infection and they're doing nothing about it. Uh, they're being very, very successful in what they're doing. No, they're not. And as you know, I want the governors to be running things now. Because I don't want to be bothered with this stuff. Let Jared handle it like world peace. I mean, he solved the Middle East. I don't know if you know this. Have you heard about Israel and Palestine lately? No, you haven't. You know why? Because our uh, country is on fire. In some cases, we'll supersede. But in this case, it's this? not. Why don't you just request it? I'm not asking if you I think it depends. Why do you have to order it? Yeah. It depends on the individual state that you're talking about. But uh, there's eight of them. They're Republican governors. You know them personally. They're your buddies. Guys, can you issue a stay-at-home order? They're doing How you enforce it or whether you enforce it is up to you, but can you at least go through the process? Very well. Because if it, the people that abide by it will not pass infection, at the very least. 
people, and they're doing a magnificent job in running their states. Well, South Carolina has 1,700 cases right now of coronavirus. Uh, Utah has 1,255. I mean, are these not states that you think should have no, those? No, I think they're doing a great job. Well, that's a very small number relative to population. Uh, it's larger than some states that do have stay-at-home orders. Okay, that just, it's up to the. If I saw something wrong, if I saw a, a massive breakout, I'm just going to wait during an infectious disease epidemic to see if the numbers tick up. You know, uh... Which that's not? If in a very low population state, they have a percentage that's higher than others. I would come down very hard, but... but yeah, two weeks after it mattered. Isn't the key in this pandemic getting ahead of those numbers, though? Uh, no, not in that case, but in the case... I know the states you're talking about. By the way, I think you're up to 92% is covered. 92% of the country is covered. And from a constitutional standpoint, they made the difference. They called the shots. Yes, Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, this is not a constitutional issue, dummy. Question about messages. Just ask. You and the others here are saying people need to continue following the mitigation efforts, but you're also- Yeah, but not really. I mean, not if you're in Utah. Saying again, the cure must not be worse than the problem. Which is it? It's cure must not be worse than the disease. No, I'm just saying we have to get this country open, Jeff. It has to- and uh, I think the states that are open where cases are growing at an exponential rate compared to the places that have bent the curve by having stay-at-home orders uh, will be open sooner and have fewer people in them. It open. This country was not designed to be closed. Yeah, what, what, is, what does that sentence mean? Does anybody know what the shit he's talking about? This country was not meant to be closed. No country was meant to be closed. This is an emergency. So we have the greatest we've ever... I know he was quoting him, but it drives me crazy. I wish he would have said, the cure, we know that you feel that the cure shouldn't be worse than the disease, but... And then we're paying people to stay home? Want... Yeah, we know what's happening. Think of it. Oh, we're paying now. people not to go to work. Right. Because if they go to work, they'll spread a disease that could kill a bunch of people. Some of whom you might like. How about that? How does that play? And, and they want to go to work. They understand. Yeah. By the way, they don't even want, they don't want money. This point, country is great. But we're paying people. We have to get back to work. That's what I'm saying. We know that, but we don't do that until the disease is under control. And your answer to the disease is, I'm letting the states handle it. We'll just see what blah, blah, blah. Go ahead. <laughs> He's like, eh, uh, shit, you. Ugh. Please. Please. Give me a good one. This is off topic. Uh, it's about the announcement from last night. It's a yes or no question. But not that we expect the answer to be yes or no. But was it Ouch. Michael Atkinson doing the job of the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, the job he was supposed to do when he simply took the whistleblower complaint to Congress that what hadn't been taken previously, wasn't he doing the job that he was supposed to do that American taxpayers were paying him to do? And why did you decide to turn? I thought he did a terrible job. Absolutely terrible. He took a whistleblower report, which turned out to be a fake report. It was fake. No, it wasn't. It was a real whistleblower, real report. It was totally wrong. It was a no, it wasn't. About my conversation with the president of Ukraine. Which, and everything that was in that report lined up with the transcript that you put out that's not a real transcript, that's a memo, and there's a bunch of redacted and missing parts, but. He took a fake report. It is a real report. And he brought it to Congress. Right, which is his job. With an emergency, okay? Not. Yeah, he's got to bring it in a timely manner. Big Trump fan, that I can tell you. Well, uh, once you see the report and you realize there's something there, it's amazing how um, all of a sudden when people actually see him committing a crime, all of a sudden they're never Trumpers. Instead of saying, and we offered this to him, no, no. We will take the conversation where, fortunately, we had a transcript. If we didn't have a transcript with the kind of... The transcript's what got you in trouble. The transcript is what got you impeached. Uh, the transcript is what got you impeached. Deception and dishonesty that were practiced by the Democrats. Now you got impeached. Might not be standing here right now. Well, and Pence would be in charge, and as dumb as he is, he would have kept... He would have put the task force back in Azar's hands and given him $4 billion, and we might have ventilators. Okay. Fortunately, we had... 
Yeah, no, unfortunately. Transcript, and it was a perfect transcript. Can't stand Pence, but he'd be better at this than you. Because even the lieutenant colonel admitted it was correct. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, you asked a question. Yeah, and in it, you admitted to manipulating the Ukrainian president. So he took this whistleblower, and I keep saying, where's the whistleblower? You don't need him anymore. You gave the transcript, and it backed up what the whistleblower said. Right. The whistleblower was telling the truth. He said what was in there, that's what was in there. Why was the whistleblower allowed to do this? Why was he allowed to be, you call it fraudulent or incorrect? He wasn't. Transcript. No, but I, I, honestly, guys, I could give a shit about this. We, we, this is water under the bridge. But the firing of the IG is just him, like, this is just mafia shit. So we offered this IG, I don't know him, I don't think I ever met him. Oh, my God. Uh, how, how much does he want? And so do I. Everybody knows, but they give this whistleblower a status that he doesn't deserve. He's a fake whistleblower. And frankly, somebody ought to sue his ass off. All right. It's Try it. Sue, please, God. Who would? The only person was standing is you. Please, please sue the whistleblower because the discovery process alone will be frigging gorgeous. Please sue the whistleblower, sir. Please. Enough of the whistleblower. I've heard enough of the whistleblower because everybody, eh, that's what got me impeached. Uh, Asterix. Today, so that he is still desperate for ventilators and that he has accepted a thousand of them from the Chinese government. Are you concerned well, that what he didn't state... say is okay? Let me tell you what he didn't say. What did he not say? Two very good friends of mine brought him those whistleblower, brought him those, those uh, ventilators, right? Two very good friends of mine, they brought them. If you'd like their name, I'll give you their name. Okay, wait, back up. What the shit is he talking about? Friends of mine, but he. Even the fake news, All right. everybody in this room, and so do I, everybody knows. The Chinese government. Are you concerned well, that What he didn't state... say is... Hold on. The Chinese government. Back up. Are you... The Chinese government. Right. Why didn't you go and see the actual oh, conversation? There was no much. rush. He said, oh, we have to rush it. Whatever. He even said it was politically biased. He actually said that. The report could have been, you know who the whistleblower is, and so do you, and so does everybody in this room, and so do I. Everybody knows... But they give this whistleblower a status that he doesn't deserve. No, we protect status. We protect whistleblowers in this country because we don't have a dictatorship. We have a presidency. If you want to fight back against them, then fight back against the information they provide. He's a it's not a personal attack. Who gives a shit? Whistleblower, and frankly, somebody ought to sue his ass off. All right, it's enough of the whistleblower. Go ahead, please. Uh, the governor of New York today said that he is still desperate for ventilators and that he has accepted thousand of them from the Chinese government. Are you concerned well, that What he didn't state... say is, okay, let me tell you what he didn't say. Two very good friends of mine brought him those whistleblower, brought him those, those uh, ventilators, right? Two very good friends of mine, they brought them. If you'd like their name, I'll give you their name. Two very good friends in the Chinese government? No, but he, the governor didn't mention that. It came through the Chinese, the, the country, of China. They were given by two friends of mine. Oh, yeah? But he didn't tell you that. Who are they? Now, the governor also... Who? Who? You'll see when you read the letter. The governor also asked for 40,000. 40,000. He wanted 40,000 ventilators. Now, the governor, as you know, had a chance to get six... For the state of New York. 15,000 a few years ago. He decided not to get that. The state of New York has asked for help. Yeah. I've given him four hospitals, four medical centers. Then I gave him an additional hospital. They didn't buy 16,000 because states are responsible for acute problems within their state, not nationwide pandemics. N New York has enough ventilators for a chemical attack on their own city because they would get them from other states that weren't attacked. That's why they don't buy 16,000 new ones to just sit on a shelf. Because in their estimations, on a state level, what they're responsible for is singular attacks in their states. They don't have to provide enough for a pandemic where all of a sudden, all the technology that they would need to fight that pandemic, whatever it may be, should suddenly be like an open market fight between the states. Then I gave them... Uh, the, like the, the idiocy 
Like, don't be president if you don't want to do this stuff. Military people to operate the hospital. They were. Yeah, that's normal. Not supposed to be COVID hospital. No. The boat, the ship is not. Interesting thing happened with the ship. People aren't in accidents because there's nobody driving. There's nobody taking motorcycle rides down the West Side Highway at 100 miles an hour. People are away. So people aren't being injured. Now they're asking whether or not we could open up the ship for COVID. We have given the governor of New York more than anybody has ever been given in a long time. Yeah, and in the middle of next week, this is going to be one of the most dickish things you've ever said. Just say, I was going to say in history, but in a long time. And I think he's happy, but I happy. think that, because I watched what he said today, and it was fine. I wouldn't say gracious. It wasn't gracious. It was okay. I must. He's dealing with, they've got refrigerator trucks storing the dead, you asshole. I tell you, Gavin Newsom has been gracious. Los Angeles, California, the job we've done, and all of California. Why does that California went ahead and just blew it off. They got stuff early. It matter if they're gracious or not gracious. It, it doesn't supplies. matter. It doesn't matter. But I think when we've given as much as we've given to New York, somebody should say, nice. I'll tell you who's been very nice. Gavin Newsom. Mayor de Blasio has been very nice. He understands what we've given him. We brought him some more ventilators, too, yesterday. Because he was nice. But nobody has been given... Because he wasn't nice before, and the ventilators weren't showing. Like New York. And I think... I know he appreciates it. He just can't quite get the words out, but that's okay. So Who cares? But when he says that he needs... Look at that. He just blew up. Ugh. Thank you, Rob. Please, go ahead. Thank you so much, brother. To which one? Uh, Dr. Fauci's yeah. comments on mitigation. Um, on the reproductive uh, value of the virus, the WHO had it at, I think, 2 to 2.6. Others had it at a percentage point or two higher. Do we have a new number now based on those mitigation techniques? Have we managed to bring it down? Well, Deb, I think maybe you should answer that, right? The r not is not affected by the mitigation factors. The r not is the r not. They don't know what it is because we don't have enough tests and mitigation is our only remedy. Dr. Burke. You're welcome. Please. Yeah, uh, sure. Go ahead. Sure, why not? Why don't you answer this crap? You know, it's an it's an excellent question, and it's why all of the modelers and I really want to thank them again. They're reevaluating all of their models in light of the level of the impact of the mitigation. Good scarf today, very uh, Georgia O'Keeffe. Lots of sunflowers, trying to project a bright image. Kind of a heavy blue though. I'm gonna go with a little little power teal. Remember, none of us had really been through. And it looks like she's been shot in her left shoulder this before so when we saying you might want to spread that around with it's a field dressing i was gunned down trying to get here modeled. thank you joe carter and welcome back school closures and distancing and staying at home and all of these pieces that had never really come into the model before they're working on that very diligently now um of course just to be clear we won't know how valid the models are until we move all the way through the epidemic right what we're triangulating right now and instead of working on R, R naught, we're looking at testing and triangulating testing, test positive cases. Remember that stuff I said really fast before? This is the long version. Hospitalizations, ICUs, and the whole, and the, of course, the recoveries, because that's also very important to us. Because mm -hmm. we need an antibody test. That's another story. I think it's very important that the American people know that there are equal number of states with less than 5% positives despite high levels of testing. So there are states that are mitigating and making this work. Right. And then there's tomorrow. There are also the states that and you... If they don't have PPE, as people continue to get sick over the next week, when they're highly contagious and symptomatic, and they're at the hospital, more and more people will get sick in that transitioning from home to the hospital, to not having a ventilator, to being sick in a hallway, to spitting it on somebody. Oh, uh, the... Have you not watched a uh, contagion yet? Have you not? Can you screen that for the president, please? 18 states that have the larger outbreaks, and we're watching them very carefully, triangulating for them. All... Actually, I take it back. Don't show contagion to the president. He'll suggest we go to goop and find our cures there. All of the we'll all end up with avocado pits in our vaginas <laughs> going, I, I think it's working. ...to ensure that clients who come to the hospital are cared for. 
And then there's states in the middle that we're trying to figure out, are they changing or not? They are. Each of those states. They are. Their number is going up. Each of those epidemics within those states may have a different R value. And that is what we're trying to figure no, out. No, they don't. They have a primary R value, and then there's a secondary societal R value if you want to include mitigation. But that is not a fair indication of the transmissibility of the disease itself. Like, how does she think we haven't all been doing the reading? Am I the only one? It depend, it's very variable on each of these factors, but the bottom line is... Look, somebody's height doesn't change because they're further away. You get me? And I think going into this weekend, it's really important for the American people to, to know this. Spain and Italy are moving through this. They are seeing their number. Yeah, because they're locking shit down nationally. Of cases drop. They're seeing they are threatening citizens with flamethrowers if they go to the store unnecessarily. A number of people in hospitals drop. We are about... Uh, yeah, it's amazing how quickly... Uh, corpse leaves a hospital. Our models. We got 11% death rate in Spain. And on the actual data, about 12 days behind them. At the same time, we see in the United States really good case studies of the impact at Washington State of California. Mm -hmm. And then Wait, who who's the governors in that? Okay. Series of smaller states. What party was Inslee running to be president through? Which was it? Was it the Whig? Libertarian, I gotta, I'll look. Where we're trying to learn from them how to do surveillance and with these new... How to tell people to stay the home. HHS, Abbott ID Now kits, and I just want to thank Admiral Girard for getting them out, being able to look at testing in a more comprehensive way. We don't have testing in a comprehensive way. There are 5,000 of those kits, those Abbott machines. There are 6,700 some odd hospitals. It, you can't test the staff enough with one of those in a day. The test takes 15 minutes, and you can't test somebody else while you're waiting for the sample to test. It's great. It's super useful. But all those CEOs that came in, they come in right at one right after the other. They don't come in a group. You know why? Because one of them gets to get tested, and they wait 15 minutes, and then when they test negative, they can go in and meet with the president, and they get 15 minutes ahead of the person behind them, so the next person can either join that meeting once he's texted negative 15 minutes later, or they each get 15 minutes with the president and they're just going through like a conveyor belt. So we can be doing surveillance and mitigation simultaneously. So surveillance and mitigation. Where is Alex Jones and, and George Norrie when you need them? Why, so all of a sudden, it's not the New World Order uh, because there's a Republican in charge? We can answer that very question. It's going to be very difficult to answer at this moment across the United States. No, it isn't. You want a viral contagion or not that has nothing to do with the mitigation factors. That's what he's asking for. Because each metro cluster is on a different pathway as they move through, move through That's the- That's a different ep epidemiological question. Why, I, and for, I played Father Chip in Nightstand, the rock and roll priest, and I sang Kumbaya while playing the electric guitar. And I know this. Epidemic. And I think we just really ought to emphasize through because we see. By the way, I'm not saying I know more about epidemiology than Dr. Burks. I'm just saying I'm better at communicating it and can process what a normal person wants to hear. Italy, we see Spain moving through. And we hope to be in that same position. Through with massive numbers of dead people. By through. You mean through. At the same time as the president said. Like what happened? To my cousin, did he die? No, he's just through. Concerned about every single person that is succumbing to this virus. Dying. We all are. And that's why we're making sure that in this triangulation, they're tracking minute by minute. When we say FEMA and HHS is tracking minute by minute, the ventilator, hospital, and ICU bed need, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. We have the same website, too. I can pull it up and it'll update regularly as well. And? And also being- How contagious is the disease when you're moving about? Flexible and responsive. To have DOD take a thousand- Spit, surfaces, breathing, talking, coughing, sneezing. How long does it stay on surfaces? How contagious is- That's what he's asking you.
not if we stay indoors, will we get wet when it rains? Help. The chances of rain getting on your head when you stay at home are very different. So we're trying to decide how wet rain is based on who's staying home. Care providers out of their medical core is a very big deal. I was in the medical core for 29 years. And that's great. And thank you for your service. That's not the question. We never did that. So this is saying we respect and understand the importance and value of the American lives and doing that. But the R values will be variable by state. No, they won't. The R value of the disease itself is what he's concerned about, not based on how many people you meet, that's the state by state thing, but by how contagious is your spit, your snot, your cough, your sneeze, and your touch. Bye. She just walk away. Before I, before, I do that. before I do that, let me let me explain a little something to you. You had breaking news last night. You know that. You saw that. Where uh, I think the probable presidential candidate for the Democrats will be Joe Biden. Yeah. And he agreed that I was correct when I uh, stopped people from China very early, very, very early. Yeah, he, nobody had a problem with this. This whole story about the Democrats called you racist and stuff is garbage. Check my Twitter feed. I, I put the factcheck.org uh, page from up. Coming into our country. And, and you'd already done it after people were barred from leaving Wuhan. We've been over this. Dr. Fauci said that was- And by the way, the only people who were barred, in case you're wondering, for, listen, factor this into your skull as he says this next part. Uh, the only people that were barred during that time from coming into the country are non-US residents and visa holders who are coming for the first time. If you lived here, already had a visa, you had relatives here, you had a business here, come on in. You imagine, imagine if you, imagine only thinking that strangers carried a disease. That if, uh, he can't be sick, I know him. What a dumb, I, I mean, wrap your head around that, because that's what he did. Very big moment because it would be a no it didn't affect the numbers at all the the disease was already in the country much different because he'd ignored it for a month sure we have right now nope had we allowed thousands and th nope the epidemiologists already say it, it it hit and spread at the same rate that it did because you let everybody in except people who are non-resident visas thousands of people from a specific area i don't have to go into it from china to wuhan just say it because if you say it You'll have to admit that the Chinese shut travel out of Wuhan before you shut travel into the United States from a portion of people who had never been here before. Come in highly infected. Uh, it would have been a very different uh, thing. The no. Thing. So I appreciate and By the way, that doesn't matter. They got into Seoul, South Korea the same way. You know, that town of 38 million people. Uh, and they managed to mitigate it and bend their curve. You think they're further away from China and have less travelers than us? fact that he did because I was called xenophobic, racist. I was called many things. No, they weren't. Not by anybody who mattered. People on the ground might have done it because they hate you anyways and they know you are. But that has nothing to do with this. Not because you shut off travel from there. Everybody's like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, when I did that very early. No, you didn't do it very early. You did and it after they couldn't leave anymore. I got a lot of credit for it in uh, the Federalist because the Federalist covered... Because they don't want any Chinese people here anyways. I... the. Stormfront gave me great marks. The whole journey. And they said Trump was, I didn't speak to the author, respected author. They said Trump was right at every single move. And on top of that, he was going through a fake impeachment, a hoax. I was going. Tough. Can't walk and chew gum. Oh, so anything that Clinton did wrong during the impeachment and afterwards, we can just kind of write off anything he signed, any bill he did. We can go, hey, it's not his fault. He was going through an impeachment at the time. Through a hoax when I made the decision. Oh, so you were drunk on hoax? And that does take a little time and certainly a little thinking time. Oh, yeah, there is a little thinking time. He burned a little hard drive space. But I appreciated the fact that uh, Joe Biden announced last night that he now agrees that I was correct. You saw the report come out that I was correct when I stopped yeah, nobody had the, this imaginary the Democrats hated it idea. Uh, be Calling it the Chinese virus at that point was the problem because your followers don't know the difference between a Chinese person or anybody else. So they were attacking Asian people for it, stigmatizing them. From China coming in.
at a very early date. President, can we talk about the um, Captain Crozier of the USS Rosa? Which one? What? Captain Crozier the, who was removed. Who? I forgot who he was already. The captain who was removed as the commander of the USS Rosa. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw the videos of sailors cheering for him as he left. Our reporting shows that... Look at that shrug. I mean, I mean, look, if it wasn't for bone spurs, I could have had his job. Some sailors have said that they are worried to re-enlist because they are not convinced that commanders are taking care of their health and taking care of them. No. Can you, what, what do you say to them? Well, we're going to take care of them. I don't know what, uh, why they would think that. How much about it? I can only... I don't know much about it. He relieved the dude of duty because he was worried about 106 soldiers and the rest of his guys on his ship getting sick, but I don't know that much about it. Tell you this. Here we have one. He's probably a copy boy. It sounds like a Democrat to me. The greatest. Here we have one of the greatest ships in the world, nuclear aircraft carrier. Right. Incredible ship. With 100 sick soldiers on it. With thousands and thousands of people. And you had about 120 that uh, were. More than the cruise ships. Infected. Now, I, I guess the captain stopped in Vietnam and people got off in Vietnam. I, perhaps you don't do that in the middle of a pandemic or or something that looked like. So they caught it in Vietnam. Is that the idea? It's going to be, you know, history would say. Shore leave before you were telling everybody that it was uh, during the time you were calling it a hoax. Don't necessarily stop and let your, your sailors get off, number one. But more importantly, he wrote a letter. The letter was a five page letter from a captain. Yeah, because you weren't letting his soldiers get treatment. And the letter was all over the place. That's not appropriate. I don't think that's appropriate. And these are tough people. These are tough, strong people. So why don't they just die on the ship for America? I thought it looked terrible, to be honest with you. Now they made their decision. Who cares? I didn't make the decision. Secretary of Defense was involved and a lot of- mm -hmm. And I said, get rid of them. Wait till that part of the story comes people out. People were involved. I thought it was terrible what he did, to write a letter. A letter? I just pardoned a war criminal, and he goes and writes a letter? That's worse than posing with a dead body and shooting a teenager who's not armed. I mean, this isn't a, a class on literature. This is a cap. It, it, did he let this guy go because he was afraid he'd have to le read five pages? ...of a massive ship that's nuclear-powered. Oh. So if it was a ro if if they rode, it would be okay. He shouldn't be talking that way in a letter. He could call and ask. The uh, he did. That was the point. No one was listening. And suggest. And suggest. Hey, um, is there a suggestion box over there? Yeah, it's the round thing in the corner, full of uh, uh, presidential daily briefings. But he stopped in Vietnam. A lot of people got off the boat. They came back and they had infection. Uh huh. And you mean. American soldiers, American service members. I thought it was inappropriate for the captain of a ship to do. I want to. I don't want to comment as to whether or not, but I agree with their decision 100 percent. In the back, please. Um, Joe Biden. I uh -uh. Actually, just attacked you in a tweet. I don't know if you have seen it. He just what? Attacked you. He just said. Well, he, that didn't he attacked me in a tweet. He attacked you in a tweet. Right, and it's what does he think he's doing? Running against him? Thing. Look, he has people, he has professionals from the Democrats. Mr. President, right let me just read what he said. He said Donald Trump is not responsible for the coronavirus, but he is responsible for failing to prepare our nation to respond to it. How do you respond okay. to that, sir? Uh, he We're did. doing a great job. We're doing a fantastic job. And he uh, write that. that he didn't write that. It's done by a Democrat operative. He doesn't write. He doesn't, he's probably not like me. I write my speeches every day. That's why I can come up here and extemporaneously probably not even watching right now. Why would he? Uh, and if he is, he doesn't understand what he's watching. <laughs> well, then Joe Biden is my president because I've never felt more seen by Joe Biden in my life. But just so you understand, uh, nobody does. It was very nice what they wrote out. I don't know. You know, they released it at a strange time, you know, sort of a strange time to release something like that. But he admitted I was right. And if you read the Federalist story, which most of you won't. Oh, my God. We're going back to good press again. I got great reviews. Because you don't want to. But you'd learn something. Because if you go, it goes through a chart. Times. I was early. Dr. Fauci, I think, I don't think he's changed his mind. But he said it was a very important step. No. When we stopped China from coming in. China from coming in. I shut the border, otherwise known as the Atlantic Ocean, for anybody who'd never been here before. Because... Only Chinese people I've never seen before 
have the disease. I read that somewhere. From the specific area that was... Wuhan. And it's not even... Oh, my God. It was right after Chinese New Year. People have family in Wuhan, flew back to see them, even if they live in Beijing or Shanghai or Shenzhen or Nanjing. And I'm pretending you know any of those places besides Beijing. Heavily infected. We'd have a whole different thing right now. Nope. So I don't really know what... Nope. Joe Biden said. I don't really... Yeah, you don't know what he said, and you don't know what he's talking about because you don't know what you're talking about. And again... Joe Biden helped put together the pandemic response team. They know what's in the mission statement. I see every once in a while I'll say something, I'll make a... You'll, I'll say something, and then tomorrow I'll say something else. Speech, and then it'll be critiqued, and... Yeah, you're president. Get this beautiful, brilliant critique. I get good reviews one day, and then just because the next night I phone it in and my notes are flat, they say I can't sing anymore. What's up? Joe Biden didn't write that. He's, what are you saying? He's got a press agent who they format statements like a professional organization? Joe Biden didn't write that. He would. Yeah, because uh, all the words, you can't believe somebody texts something with all the words properly spelled and in the right order? He did, but he didn't. Go ahead, please. Back. I wanted to ask Dr. Fauci a quick question. China has warned of a resurgence of the virus. Has the U.S. developed a plan if, in fact, a second wave of the virus does, in fact, occur here in yes. the country? Yes. Yes, in the fall. They're gonna. He's counting on there being treatments available, and and we know how to stop the mitigation and track it better if it comes back in the fall. I do, I mean- He said this before, but- yeah. The things that obviously is parallel with thinking about the possibility, as I mentioned a little while ago, about mitigation allowing us to turn the- By the way, his hands are bigger than Trump's. Wanna very much on the- Well, just a little, you noticed? Front burner is what happens when we do, because the- His hands are bigger than Trump's. Risk of there being a resurgence is real. Yeah. So what we need to do, and I believe I said this before, but it's worth repeating that you did what we need to and it does. have in place and we will have that in place is that as you then pull back, you have to have the capability of in a very pristine, precise way, do the kind of containment when you do see it. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when you get to mitigation, you mean have testing in place and containment takes the back seat because you just you mean six months from now, we'll have plenty of tests struggling to mitigate. But when you get it down, you need to make sure it doesn't resurge. So that will require the ability to test, to identify, to isolate, and to do contact tracing. That's what we have to have in place, and hopefully we will at the time that we then pull back. He's talking to Trump right now. Uh, question for Dr. Ott from the FDA. You mentioned the plasma. So these are this plasma the people that were infected that have now either recovered or they're doing well enough. The idea is that they have antibodies already in their blood and they are immune to it. And therefore, if you put it in, the body learns how to fight back against it. This is not new technology. And we're all sitting at home. We all have time to study this. And then they're transferring it to is it family members. Can you walk us through that's working? And is it kind of like a case by case basis? Family members? This is our hospital. What are the results from that? I just was not familiar with that. Plasma. So um, this is a situation where someone who's recovered from the virus doesn't have the virus in their system at all. You can take plasma, and this is a pretty routine procedure. You can actually donate a couple times a week, a couple times a month, frankly, um, and give that plasma. That plasma contains the proteins in the blood that have the, the antibodies against the virus. You can take that, process it, and then give it to someone who's ill. Um, and so that allows... For someone you don't want to get ill, namely the medical providers. You to transfer that immunity. It doesn't have to be matched by family or anything like that. Because it's not blood, it's plasma. That... Since last Tuesday, the Tuesday before last, we've allowed academics. By the way, I once performed at Crackers in Indiana, and I know this. There's in other laboratories and hospitals around the country to do this on a compassionate use basis. What we did was we pulled this together in what's called an expanded access program and run it through the Red Cross because they've got the greatest system and capacity for doing For blood and plasma, you think? And this allows us to scale up. So that when people get sick, we can actually have these donated plasma packs given to the patients who are sick. And then when people recover, you can get plasma from them before they leave. Do people need to be donating plasma? I mean, obviously, we, some of us don't know if we had it or recovered. I mean, what should people yeah, testing would be helpful. Be doing? So um, we, we've, we've started. By the way, chat room, you guys are awesome. I mean, there's a couple of jerks in there, but you guys have been awesome. I don't want you to feel like I'm ignoring you. The uh, 
Ecamm thing that allows me to put the phrases on screen has frozen again, like it does sometimes, which some of you may know about. So don't feel left out. Um, yeah. With the Red Cross in this program, we you're great. Made an announcement yesterday. Um, we are planning to actually scale that up, and we'll have more information this week because we want to make sure we have the systems in place. It's a superb question. Thanks. Yeah, it is. It's functional. It's useful. It's probably the closest thing to a treatment we're going to have. Right. We are going to be vampire plasming treatment into people before anything else works. <laughs> Even hydroxychloroquine, about to go to zone and go on. A, a boire. Mr. President, can you clarify the situation with 3M right now? Germany said that it was an act of piracy, that 200,000 masks were apparently diverted from Thailand to the United States instead of to Berlin. Is that a miscommunication? Did that actually happen? Whoa. And should 3M be fulfilling contracts? We're very disappointed in 3M. They should be taking care of our country, and they can sell to others, but they should be taking our, care of our country. The people that well, if they can sell to others, then what's the issue? Thank you, Benny Loco. Yes, everybody, uh, uh, Benny Loco saying, hit the thumbs up for freedom. 503 people watching right now. I mean, come on. Come on. You're all here. Give a thumbs up. Like and subscribe. Become a Patreon. Super chat. Do something. I'm doing this for free. You know how hard it is to sit through this daily? I have dealt with them. I have dealt successfully with many companies. Thank you, Benny Loco. Over the last month, they don't like the way 3M has treated our country. They don't, frankly, like the representatives of 3M. They all suck. And no act of pri You said uh, piracy, right? Piracy? For there's been no act of piracy. No, there's been no act of piracy. It's the opposite. 3M has... The, what's the opposite of piracy? ...not treated our country well. So, uh... We stole their boat. And if they do, great. And if they don't, they're going to have a hell of a price to pay. We're going to steal all their boats. Okay. I, I okay. say it that way. And I watched him on television uh, on something talking about how this is so hard to believe, so hard to fathom. They ought to get their act together because I got involved and I looked at what happened and they have not, 3M has not treated our country Can well. Can just clarify about that German order? Go ahead, please. Uh, we'll get you the information. What, what is, wait, so this is what he's talking about. U.S. accused of piracy after mask shipment is diverted from Germany. So a German official, this is not from 3M. This is from Germany uh, themselves. German official accused the U.S. of modern piracy after a shipment of medical masks intended for German police were reportedly diverted to the States, a sign of how the hot international market for the protective equipment has become. About 200,000... 200,000, wow. N95 masks were confiscated in Bangkok as they were being transferred between planes in Thailand, uh, Berlin authorities told BBC. So this isn't even, I will try my best, DC2257, to try and keep up the funny faces. I'm, I'm trying to put a bright smile on this. We all got to soldier through because it's awful. Uh, Andreas Geisel, the interior minister of the Berlin state, described the diversion as an act of modern piracy. Hmm. Um, and press the German government to intervene with the demands that Washington follows the international trade rules. This is no way to treat transatlantic partners, Geisel said. Even in times of global crisis, there should be no Wild West methods. German reports said the mask had been made by a Chinese producer for the Minnesota-based 3M, but the Guardian reported that the company denied the incident occurred. 3M has no evidence to suggest 3M products had been seized. 3M has no record of any order of respirators from China for Berlin police. The company said in the statement, we cannot speculate where this report or originated. So the Chinese, wait, the Germans bought some from a Chinese company that might make stuff and license from 3M sometimes, and they were diverted and taken from one ship to another, probably bought out from under the nose on the black market because people will double sell stuff all the time. And by the way, I don't think I saw um, uh, the, uh, yeah, um, yeah, 3M just says, no, it didn't. Yeah. 3M didn't say anything bad. This is super weird. I was wondering about... I'm walking off. <laughs> You're seeing as far as these patients... Why does everyone want to talk to Fauci? I know more about war than the generals and more about 
math than the accountants and more about science than the the Fauci's. Regards to coronavirus, I know the president mentioned this earlier, but what, is, what does the medicine say? Uh, it, what is the question? Is that uh, what is the incidence of coronavirus? If you have lupus, do you have a greater yeah. chance of yeah. getting coronavirus? There, or? There's right now. This is being looked at in a natural history study. We don't have any definitive information to to be able to. This is just anecdotal stuff. Everybody's chucking around. We're in the middle of a fire. You, you, people are bumping on doors to see what's open. Make any comment on that. It's an obvious good question because it might be a way for us to get some interesting and potentially important data as to the role of those medications. Or, or the genetic makeup or the uh, alteration of the systems of people who have lupus. That's something that is now being looked at, but we don't have any data to be able to say anything definitively. And I hope they use the hydroxychloroquine. And Why? Why? They can also do it with ZPAC, subject to your doctor's approval and all of that. But I hope they use it because I'll tell you what. Uh, what do you have to lose? In some cases, they're in bad shape. What do you have to lose? It's been out there for a long time. and I Because one of your followers died and his wife is in critical condition. They use it. and uh, they're gonna Why? You hope it works. Look at the, with doctors, work with doctors, get what you have to get. Get what you can do, anything. Ask your doctor about the blue pill. It, he's literally a pharmaceutical ad without all the boilerplate at the end. Like he should legally be required right now. Overuse of hydroxychloroquine can cause ass bleeding and feet falling off and itchy skin and hair growing out of your eyeballs. Some people have gambled their life savings away and other people find themselves in bed with a blind hooker trying to sell a truck to an old man in a river. <laughs> But we have it uh, stockpiled and it's uh, mostly headaches. Uh, we have a lot of it. Yeah, you bought it sight unseen and now you're trying to move it like hot dogs rotting. We're getting more of it. And I said, why? Oh, well, yeah, I spoke to Prime Minister. You bought more of it because everybody bought it up and the people with lupus and RA didn't have enough. So, Modi, we're getting more of it, but we have a lot of it. And I hope they use it because it's been used for a long time. And they're for malaria or it's passed the safety test. Uh, no. FDA has been terrific. Dr. They're great. They're just letting us try shit on people. And by the time, you know, the case, is, if it rolls through and it finally gets to me, we'll know whether it works or not. And those people can die first. Han, I appreciate it very much, too. But I've seen some results. O'Hara's treachery has disgraced us. It's early, I guess. It's early, but... It is early. And you... Shh. They should look at the lupus thing. I don't know what it says, but... They... The lupus thing. There's a th rumor out there that... Oh, rumors. That's good. Uh, Doc, I, there's a rumor going around that this uh, there's a sassy pill I could take. Um, doctor, I, I don't know how to react to this uh, diagnosis you've given me. Is there any treatment available? Well, there's a rumor that if you drink uh, snake testicle juice and stay in the sun for three days after burying a potato on a full moon, it could work. I'm willing to try anything. Okay, well, don't get struck by lightning, and I'll see you at midnight. Because it takes care of lupus very effectively, as I understand it. It's a, it doesn't take care of lupus. It's an ongoing treatment they have to use sometimes. You know, a drug that's used for lupus. So there's a study out there that says people that have lupus haven't been catching this virus. No, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Why don't you investigate that? What do you mean? Why don't you investigate this before you suggest a drug? And there's also- You are the president of the United States. What is this? Why are you outsourcing everything? So other studies, you know, with the malaria, that the malaria countries have very little people that take this- They're not testing. The malaria countries are the impoverished ones. It's a novel disease. No one has a test for it, dummy. Drug for malaria. It's so funny how all these places where they've never seen a helicopter, there's no sign that they have it at all. Malaria, which is very effective for malaria, that those countries have very little of this virus. I don't know, you're gonna check. They're dying of 20 other things and nobody's checking. Get out. But I think people should, uh, if it were me, in fact, I might do it anyway, I may take it. Please do. Go, uh, let, uh, yeah, we're all gonna wanna watch though. Live stream that. Okay, I may take it. Live stream it. And I'll have to live stream it. Ask my doctors about that, but I. Why? 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 You're giving other people the advice that it'll be, that it's useful. Hey, take it. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Um, Mr. President, last, 
last week, the last couple of days, you've been really optimistic about Russia and Saudi Arabia coming together on the deal on the oil. And then... But in the last 24 hours, uh -huh. the OPEC plus meeting's been pushed back. They've yeah, but you don't understand, I wasn't really trying to solve this problem. We were just trying to artificially pump up oil prices so I could do a, a so I could uh, sell, and then uh, that would fall apart, and then we could buy when it gets low again. Well, the OPEC can do whatever. Well, look, I've been against OPEC all my life, because what is it? It's an illegal. I've been against OPEC all my life, but yesterday I'm calling my friend Mohammed bin Salam. Uh, I could barely hear him over the sound of the buzz saw ch chopping up. <laughs> right, uh, and and the and and Russia all of a sudden. You could call it a cartel, you could call it a monopoly, you have a lot of different names for it. But it broke down very violently, very violently. And? So I don't care about OPEC, I really don't. I couldn't but care less about not, OPEC. Let me just say, no, no, I think they're gonna settle it. You know why? Because they're gonna be destroyed. They're destroying themselves if they don't. No, they're fighting each other. They're, they're, it's a game of chicken. They're playing an economic game of chicken. Russia, it's a very... Very what? Important, and we had a very good conversation. I don't doubt it. Was there, are there notes? Was there a translator present? President Putin and myself. Very, oh, yeah? Very good. But Russia, a big part of their economic well-being is from oil. Well, oil is at a... Really? That's weird. Because my, my Russian uh, washing machine is terrific. I don't know if you've had one of those. And the Russian blenders, those things are the shit. Record low. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. It's actually lower than you even think. And it's to their advantage. Obviously, it's to Saudi Arabia's advantage. They told me they're discussing. Saudi Arabia went much further than that. He thinks that a deal is going to be made at 10 million barrels reduction, and maybe more than that. He actually indicated it would most likely be much more than that. So we'll see what happens. What? I mean, we're going to see what happens. But as far as OPEC is... We'll see what happens. It's great. You know what I mean? That's true leadership. Sir, I mean... I was against OPEC I don't know, for maybe. years and oh, years because we'll I thought it was you know, very... I called it of a great... Yeah, we do have sanctions against Russia. ...fair to our country. The beautiful... It was not fair to our country? The thing is, we have built one of the great... You know, one of the things we've done is created so much we, we produce. We're the number one producer in the world right now. I don't like it for a different reason, because it's going to hurt a lot of jobs in our country. But uh, wouldn't 99 cents a gallon gas actually help more jobs than higher gas prices would? Wouldn't that expand and include, because a lot of states tax gas, for example, um, and if people have been paying $3 a gallon, you could tax 50 cents uh, state tax on gas. If it hits a dollar, nobody would even feel it. And you could rebuild every road in the country. That's weird. We can't have that happening. This price, it's gonna hurt a lot of jobs. Now, with all of that being said, people are gonna be driving paying 90 cents a gallon. Did you ever hear of that? What's that, 1952 or something? Mm, 70s, but okay. All right, so from that- Right, so why would you want to save the, the oil and gas company? Standpoint, but you know what? I am a big believer in our great energy business and we're gonna take care of our energy business. Well, yeah, we're, gonna, we're letting them put their excess oil, instead of stopping production, putting it in the national reserves, in the strategic reserves, and then letting them sell it later. If I have to do tariffs on oil coming from outside, or if I have to do something to protect our thousands and tens of thousands of energy workers and our great companies that produce all these jobs, I'll do whatever I have to do. Okay, yeah, ma'am, go ahead. Yeah, um, you tweeted a little while ago about uh, how sad it is for kids they don't have Little League right now. Um, and I'm wondering if you're willing to share about your youngest son and how he's dealing with life and sh sheltering in place. Oh, boy. Not going to school, no sports. Well, he's a, a good athlete, and he loves soccer. And he uh, he's like everyone else. I mean, everything's shut down. He's in his room. He's happy. But he's not as happy as he could be. He'd like to be playing sports, Baron. And let's see what happens. Tell, it's, let's see what happens. Let's see how the kid turns out. We have to get back. We have to get back. What Remember that. that. We have him. to get back. And we have to get back soon. Okay? Yeah. On, the, uh, on the jobs reports numbers. You guys ever stop? You want to keep going for a little while? 
Huh? I mean, do you ever stop? How many times you ask? And in many cases, it's the same. Actually, a lot of good questions. Go ahead. It's a press conference. You can call it off whenever you want. Leave. But keep going, yes? Yes, sir. So you're not going to blame me that I kept it going too long? People said, oh, he kept it. Every exactly. time you'll ask it, no. I mean, no, it's amazing. Tony, yeah. <laughs> every hand went up. I, I thought we've gone through the Every, I think every single hand went up. There's new news every day. Last time. What, what? That, I mean, you know what it shows? Amazing. You, it shows you that you love what you do. Go ahead. You love your, you know, one thing you love is getting those death statistics to people and finding out. You do. No, you do. And some of you do it well. <laughs> See what I did there? Not all of you. Go ahead. Take, I'm not looking at you, okay. by the way. Uh, so we did get the jobs reports numbers yesterday. Obviously, that's kind of a small portion because it's like the first half of March. Was there anything in there that was any sign of, of optimism? Obviously, we all saw the numbers, you know, down in retail, down in hospitality. Was there anything that you said, okay, maybe with this virus, we will yeah. see some sort of net gain? Look. Yeah. Pharmaceutical companies, you're going to buy into uh, whoever comes up with the cure, that kind of upside? The job numbers. All the stiff. Netflix. I would buy Netflix stock right now. Hulu. Whatever. I never met him. I think he was on Star Trek, right? Are what they are. We asked everybody to go home, don't work. So the numbers are going to be, you know, astronomical. We understand that. I understood that. I know somebody said the numbers are meaningless, and then they took that to mean, oh, jobs don't mean anything. And, and you know, it was just another fake news story. It wasn't me that said it, by the way. It was a very smart person, but they meant it. Yeah, well, we know the difference between those two things. By saying it really is what, that's why I answer your question very carefully. The numbers are what they are. We know the numbers were going to be massive because we told everybody to go home and lock your door, essentially, right? Don't come to work. You can't come to work. Don't go outside. Don't yeah, breathe. Don't do anything. Yeah, all the, we, all, the, all the conversation about the economy is frigging meaningless right now because there's no reflective reason why the economy is the way it is. It is directly result for the pandemic. Nobody who's fired stays fired. There's going to be a bunch of industries that will start up slow. This is not relatable. And, this, and even the terms they're talking about the economy with this are just dumb. Like, this, always, this is such a circular, stupid part of the conversation. Open up our country, but I know- And that's all he ends up doing is, we need to go, go, we want to do more stuff. And we're going to just go to somebody else. Who cares? Clapping when nurses leave. Uh, I've seen well, we've seen a lot of that. You, you might say something that I have seen such support. I saw this morning where everyone's there. They're clapping for fire department. They're clapping for peace. But they are really go. These people are, you know what they're like? They're like, Tony, they're like warriors, Mike. They're like warriors. They were going into Elmhurst Hospital. Elmhurst, do I grow up next to? It's right near me. I've seen it. I know it very well. And I'll watch the jail over time. It's just been tragic right near where I grew up in Queens, going in and the people in buildings are going, I mean. Why are you surprised? Why are you acting surprised? By the way, this is the guy who said that people were dancing in the street in New Jersey after 9-11 because they couldn't wait to see the buildings go down with zero surprise. Like, they were all there, you saw them. And now he's like, people are happy to see doctors and nurses, it's weird. The rock stars. Rock stars, piss off. They're warriors. Nurses, doctors, uh, first responders, what they're, what they're going through. And they don't even know what's going to happen. I mean, they go in. No, they don't. And they, they know that they're not going to have enough PPE. And you keep going, who uses all this shit? And by the way, even if they have great equipment, they're catching it. You know, great equipment. Oh, I see. So if they catch it, it's not because you didn't get them enough PPE. It's because some of them are... Good equipment, they catch it. They catch it with good, with bad. It is evil. But Tony, you might say something. And Mike, you may something, say something about that. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought up that, that question because I don't think people can really fully appreciate the extraordinary effort of these people. I mean, we it's, do. It's, it's amazing. I, you know, I did all of my medical training in New York City in a big, busy New York City hospital. I appreciate and this. I don't, because of the nature of- I have of no how, problem with what they're saying about the healthcare workers and we, uh, we, they have our full support. I don't, and the idea that these guys can stand up there and go, they're great, and that's how we're supposed to think these guys are great because they notice. Contagious, the coronavirus is. 
Really? Tell Fox. They don't get sued out of existence. They're also supplementing for family. I mean, that's what, that's what gets to me. When I hear the stories that understand. And I'll, I'll, give, I'll give Pence this. I don't doubt what he's saying right now. Because these stories of people dying and they never get to see their family again is rough. It's heartbreaking. And if you have a soul, it gets to you. I, I, I believe what Pence is saying about his experience right now, because you would have to be completely made of stone. Understandably, in nursing homes and in hospitals, they're restricting visitors, and they should, to prevent the spread of the virus to be brought into the hospital or to be brought out. Um, and so to hear the stories of healthcare workers who are holding up an iPhone um, while someone who's critically ill with the coronavirus may well be saying their last goodbyes to their family. And then to be there in those moments. I mean, our healthcare workers are, they're not just doctors and nurses today. They, they're supplementing for family, for people all across the country. And, and I just think um, you know, tomorrow's Palm Sunday. It's Holy Week in the great Christian tradition. And I have people ask me from time to time, send me an email or on the many conference calls that we have, they said, what can we be praying about? And my first thought is with the families who have lost loved ones and the patients who are struggling with coronavirus. But during this very special week, I just encourage people to pray for our healthcare workers. Uh, pray for them and their families uh, they are really the hands and feet every day, not just of health care, but of the heart of the American people. And we are all grateful for them every hour of the day. Okay. Uh, Pence gets points. I don't care who hates me for this. He meant that. You could tell. Um, regardless of his, your differences with him politically or whether or not you think his Christianity is genuine, it, it, it is immaterial in this moment. Pence meant that. You could tell he was trying not to break. Um, and I believe him. Because you, you have to be made of stone not to have that stuff affect you. I think we all tear up when we see these stories. It's heartbreaking and beautiful at the same time. Um, so I, for the record, I appreciate what he said. And uh, that, you know... Credit to Mike Pence for being a human being. And notice he never had to look down to say it. And they didn't have to interject about, that's why I was such a good governor of Indiana. And think also about the Army Corps of Engineers. That's a little different, depending on where they are and where they're working. But the Army Corps of Engineers, throwing up a hospital in New York City, 2,500 beds. In and, it, and the builder comes in. I, you know, this is construction. If I didn't have to pay for this kind of shit. Three days? I mean, think of that. And FEMA, what they're doing. Yes, they do that stuff all the time. Again, here he comes. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. And the National Guard is now delivering for the states because the states... They're great. We appreciate that. Not the point. The, the healthcare workers might die doing what they're doing. We're unable to get. We drop it at a big warehouse where we're told to drop it. And then not tell them the shit is there. We talked about this. And the states were unable, some of the states were unable to bring it from the warehouse to the site. Because you didn't tell them where it was. I left a package at your house. You did? Yeah, yesterday. Why didn't you ring the bell? Well, I don't know. I thought you'd see it. Where'd you put it? Out behind the trash cans. Why would I look behind the trash cans? I don't know. I just thought you'd, trash day's not for a week. So we got the National Guard to become a delivery service, if you can believe it, and they would bring it. And some of those sites were dangerous sites. They were very dangerous sites. What, is it a bad neighborhood? The Javits Center is surrounded by the criminal element. I don't know if you've seen. Think of that. The jets are there. The uh, It's been amazing. It's been amazing. I, I just think. Try, try to show some emotion. Try, like, just compare. All these people who are saying, yeah, but if we get rid of Trump, we got Pence. Look at the comparison right now. Right now. Look what Pence said at a moment when it mattered, all policy disagreements aside, and look at Trump's face right now as he's talking about they built a tent in some of these neighborhoods. People are shitty. 
I've never seen anything like it. I'm so yes, you have. Proud of this country. And, and really, it's a world problem. And, and some, some 151 countries is not our problem. We didn't start it. Countries J shift the blame again. In the world are just handling it better so well. You know, again, I keep saying it's 151. That was as of two. Yeah. And all of them that have taken it seriously, all the big countries have started bending the curve. And we aren't. Three days ago, it's probably more. Some people said they didn't know there were that many countries. That's how big this Nobody is. Nobody said that. You said that. And Mike said something else. So, yeah, Palm Sunday tomorrow. You don't know. You didn't know it was Palm Sunday tomorrow. Think of it. When Think of it. What does Palm Sunday mean? Is that when we all go into churches on Palm Sunday? Is that where they go? But think of next Sunday. Easter? You don't know what Palm Sunday is. You don't know what Good Friday is. You don't know why people are going to church. Easter. You don't go to church. Don't pretend you go to church. And I brought it up before. I said... Both Corinthians were going to be there, and now they can't. The two Corinthians have to be six feet apart. Maybe we could allow special for churches. No! No! You know what's special for churches? We're going to, you know, we're going to allow churches to not pay for internet in this country. No matter what your religious service is, you're, you're, you're going to get free internet because we are a, a secular religious country that will protect some of those. You guys are going to get it on these special holidays because of what we're all going through. All churches, no matter what. I, like, who? No, you don't let people go into giant rooms. Special dispensation means letting them live. Not, well, what if we just let them get together once in the middle of a pandemic? Maybe. What a stupid idea. We could talk about it. Maybe we could allow them with great separation outside. When he outside, just everybody meet in the parking lot like they're not going to hug. What are you, stupid? Easter Sunday. I don't know. It's something we, we should talk about. No, we shouldn't talk about it. People should stay home. But somebody did say that, well, then you're sort of open. Then you're what? You're what? Then you're sort of. Putting it up to that little, you know, do we want to? No, we don't want to. Take a chance on doing that when we've been doing so well. No, we and we haven't been doing well. We're just getting started with mitigation. And then you want to get everybody in church. Get the old people out to church. How about everybody? You know, a lot of people who are sick. Sometimes they feel like if somebody could just pray for them in person, they'll heal from it. So maybe we get all the sick people and the old people and let them go to church. What are you talking about? But Easter Sunday. It's, it's you know, what are we going to do with all the eggs? Palm Sunday. I'm going to be watching tomorrow. Watch, seeing what this is about. I've heard Palm Sunday. People talk about Palm Sunday. Live from Riverside, California. Great church. But... I'm going to be watching on a computer. Mm-hmm. Right? For the first time, are we going to film you watching it on a computer? Because I don't believe you. On a laptop. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be awake for the whole thing. I think on Easter, maybe I'll be watching from a laptop as a... Why would you not watch on a television screen? So, how sad is it that we have... It's sad. It's, yeah. Holidays. It would suck if it was Christmas too, dummy. But you wouldn't tell people to go to church because they'll get sick. Easter Palm and Easter Sunday. Easter Palm and Easter Sunday. There's both. Easter Palm. I, what happened to your hand? Oh, I got Easter Palm. I held up an egg and now I got all these stains on it and they won't come off. Easter Palm. Easter Palm. Easter Palm. Hashtag Easter Palm. And people, and, uh, people don't even know what that is. No one does. You just made it up. Watching on laptops and computers. It's La you're watching Easter Palm on laptops. That's like a Pornhub thing. Sad. But but the job. Tell us about it. Up that this whole country has done is amazing. But I'll, I'll say this: our medical professionals, what they've done. Oh, thanks. Because they are. They walk into those hospitals. You see them putting on their gear and they're they're putting it on as they're walking through the front doors. This is what... And some of those people are going to die. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Your president, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. That is your president, ladies and gentlemen. That is... This is... the. Oops, sorry. I pointed the wrong way. This is 
the greatest person the Republicans could come up with to lead their ticket and their party for the future. That's the best they can do. That's it. No better than him. Once he passes, it's all downhill. That's it. That's it. See him walking in there, there throwing on their gear, and some of those people are gonna die. <laughs> what? You're gonna die. Jesus. You know, it's like incredible. And we death. It's like incredible. We can say what we want. Yeah, apparently. Tony. Even if it doesn't make sense, we can just say what we want. Deb about young and medium aged and medium aged. Are you medium aged? Who's Everybody, raise your hand if you're medium-aged. Technically speaking, since no one knows when they're going to die, nobody knows when they're medium-aged because medium would be in the middle. Don't make me revisit an old comedy bit. Medium age. Many of those people dying, too, you know. Jeez. It generally hits the older people where they have problems. It hits young people, too, and it hits middle-aged people, too. But they Fixed it. Middle. Okay, good. People are walking into hospitals and I watch, I can't, I, I think it's amazing. It's like Batman. They just walk in and they just, it's like, get smart. They walk through one door and they throw on their gown. Next door has gloves. What? It's incredible. And they're putting their outfit, they're getting it. Oh, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. What is this? And they're going in, they're going, it's like. It, it looks, I, I'm just picturing him fighting with a garbage bag. It's like a, bat, it's like a war. No, it is exactly a pandemic. Again, there's never been anything so contagious as this. Yes, there has. Measles, measles is way more contagious. But we have a vaccine. You know who isn't getting the vaccine? Your followers. In, in 1917, it was 18. vicious if you got it. But yes, it was. It wasn't contagious like this. Now, right. In 1917, had they had the internet and all the means of communication, they could have practiced. It would have been worse because people would have been more interconnected if the Spanish flu had hit now um, before we got a grip on it and somebody sat on their ass for six weeks like you did and did nothing and pretended it was nothing, the contagion rate wouldn't have mattered. The reason why Spanish flu didn't kill anybody is because we were so separated that everybody just went ahead and died. And the virus died with them. Distancing, you know. It's social distancing because everybody was in the middle of the dust bowl. By the time People started thinking in terms, in those terms, they lost. Why is he moving like Rodney Dangerfield now? Yes, they walk in like this. To 100 oh. million people. It's a great disease. Bet it looks good on you, though. So that's modern, you know, that's a modern day great thing that happened, please. A modern day great thing that happened. <laughs> that was a good, he's even aware that that was a, oi. To what extent do you think that you can use antibody tests uh, to determine who can go back to work and how well, Yeah, you're going to be waiting a while for that. You're going to, you know who's going to, we're going to know who has antibodies? People who are in the hospital for treatment and leave after. I, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather leave that to the doctor. Yeah, you because they don't know either. Doctor, do you have an answer to that? You think it'll be a tool? We think it'll be a tool to help us get people back to work. It'll be additional information because as you know. Yeah, you think? If you when have an antibody that when are you going to have an antibody test? We don't have it. You were exposed and have recovered from it. Um, that with the information about diagnosis should help. But yeah, I agree. It should help. That's helpful. Hang on one second. Uh, I'm going to pause for just one second. Let me see if I can get this up and cut away. Yeah. Give me uh, one second. I'll be right back. There's. Sorry, it was a package. <laughs> Hold on.
Hold on one second. I'm back. There we go. And we'll try to go to this one one second. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, it, was this not? Okay, another exactly what I said. How quickly can you scale up this testing to determine on a, on a large scale how many people can go back to months work and have these antivirus? So as you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, we provided a great deal of regulatory flexibility around this. A lot of great developers have been working on this. Dr. Burks put a call out to the academic labs around the country to do this, uh, and we've been working very closely with a number of manufacturers. So we think that it can be scaled up relatively quickly. What, what's relatively qu quickly? What is that? Um, I'm drowning. Uh, we can get you a life preserver. I can throw you a life preserver, when, when, when could I get one of those things? Uh, relatively quickly. Okay, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President, a question for Dr. Fauci. In a recent interview, you had uh, said- oh, Now, don't do any pick a fight things between him and Trump. That you knew the 15 day um, guidance uh, would not be enough. Don't pick a fight between him and Trump, just, I wanted to ask your confidence level about the 30-day guidance and whether it'll be enough. You know, it's tough to talk about levels of confidence, but I can tell you one thing that I feel strongly, that if we do in a very proactive way what... We do a nationwide mitigation, stay-at-home order, things would be a lot better. Psst. It's Trump. Psst, psst. I said in my opening comment. Yeah, that he's trying to get through Trump's thick skull. And people... And Trump is ignoring, so now they are all coming out and saying this effectively so that Trump thinks it's his idea. Literally, across the country, as a baseline, have that physical separation. And as we've mentioned up here, there'll be varying degrees of that, depending upon whether you're in New York City or you're in a place that's less. But every place, everybody should be doing some degree of this physical separation. If we do... Everybody every place. Nationwide stay at home directive. You don't even have to call it an order. Directive from the president. That. We suggest that all states participate in this. We are leaving it up to the governors, but as far as the position of the presidency and the administration is, everyone should have a stay at home order right now. To How hard is that? I, again, I have confidence that what we will see is the turning around of the curve. If everybody does it, which they're not. Whether or not it'll be all the way down where we want, it's impossible to say. I would be, I would be foolish t to say that. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I am confident in, so... Is hydroxychloroquine cures anything. It's good for what ails you. It'll purr your teeth and curl your hair and give your tongue a sleigh ride. Let's take this... Makes you an inch taller and keeps you five pounds under obese permanently. Thank that mitigation works. So it, it does. We've seen it in other countries. We've seen it in our own country. And that's the reason why I keep coming up at every chance I get to plea with the American people to please take a look at those guidelines. Everybody, the whole country. That the vice president keeps putting up with his chart. Because mm -hmm. every, the whole country. Every single one of the Nationwide. Those points has something to do with physical separation. Mm hmm And mitigation does work. But again, we're not going to destroy our country. What are you... <laughs> What? What? We have to get back. We're not going to get back before we do the separate. What are you talking about? We're not going to get back before the end of April. So give a directive to the end of April for the entire country. Because, you know, at a certain point, you'll lose. This is, this is how the meetings go every day. This is what we're seeing, folks. This is the meeting that he has every single day with this. They come out with the data and the science and the graphs and the death and, and videos of, of healthcare workers screaming about not having enough stuff and the other governors going, we, we are going to run out in six days. We're going to run out in three days. We've already run out. We've got extra and we're sending them to New York, but only if we can get them back. They show him all that shit. And what does he do? We got to get back. We got to just get back to folks. This is what that's the meeting. This is the, we're watching the task force meeting happen well, live. Well, this way. Please stop having these stupid jerk fests, press conferences, and film the meeting so everybody can see directly that you're the person going, 
Well, there's more than 151 countries. Why can't we just ride it like a cowboy? All of the problems caused, then you will with what we're doing right now. What we're doing right now, I think it's going to be very successful. But you know but what? But I want to stop it. I don't know. We're gonna, we have a big decision to make at a certain point, okay? We have a big decision to make. Do we care? Uh, How many people can we sacrifice? We went this extra period of time. That's right. So, you already have said that that was there. So tell the other states, the other eight run by Republican governors, to take this seriously and do that, follow the national directive. But I, I said it from the beginning, the cure cannot be worse than the, than problem, the problem itself. Right, and the disease. We cannot let that happen. We can't let, we, have an, we can't let the disease be more important than the disease. Incredible country. And maybe we had two diseases and they could fight it out. We were having the greatest- Oh my God, glory days. Period in our country's glory history from an economic glory standpoint glory and many other days. ways. Jesus. We cannot let this continue. So at a certain point. Yeah. At the end of April, you're going to have to reassess. You're going to have to look at mitigating factors going into and see if certain areas can open up starting in May. But you don't know now. What you do know is mitigation is working. So just frigging say it. Some hard decisions are going to have to be made. Are you just going to blow off the end of the month? It is... As soon as we clear Easter, he's like, well, that's it. That's the hump. That's all the dead people. That's the most dead people. So, Go ahead. Mr. President, um, ventilator manufacturers are doubling, tripling, even quadrupling their production in some cases. That's true. Um, and, and, and yet medical uh, experts and some of these manufacturers are predicting that there will still be shortages of tens of thousands of ventilators. Uh-huh. Thank you, 1524 Scooter. I appreciate that and welcome. Is it time for you to level with the American public that there likely will be shortages of ventilators? I don't think they're going to be because a lot of people, we've got plenty, we're going to move them around. In some cases? Could be. I mean, it could be you have shortages and it could also be that you have some that have way overestimated the number of ventilators. They no. It, we think that, um, you know, we have a, a, good, a good amount ready to move. I mean, you don't. Really, like an army, they're ready to move to any hotspot. But some of the ones that you're talking about, always a nasty question from CNN. What? They're asking if they're going to have enough ventilators. But well, some of the ones, question. yeah, because I think that, frankly, you know, know, because you know what, you've asked that question about 10 times over the. Yeah, because you haven't answered it. Course of about a month. Look. Um, about a month. We're mobilized and ready. He has no idea how much time has passed. To go. We have a lot of ventilators ready to go. No, you don't. And if we had given them all out. We wouldn't have any left because we don't have a lot of ventilators ready to go. Wouldn't, and you wouldn't. Eh. So we're afraid we're going to send it someplace and somebody's going to need 20 days of treatment to survive this friggin' thing. They're going to put them on a ventilator and we can't just snatch it back out of their throat. Be overstocked in many areas. Overstocked doing is we have a very good plan to take from some areas, even though we have the 10 or almost the 10,000. Almost the 10,000. Also taking from areas. Oh, he's now including the broken ones. Is that won't be as badly hit as today we think they will be. There will be some areas hit harder than we think, and there's nothing. Yes, and there's going to be a shortage. If you have plenty ready to go, there is no shortage that Deborah or Tony or any of these professionals can do about it. This thing moves in a lot of ways. But what we're going to do is we are going to have as and, and you look at us compared to a lot of the states are going to do it for them. A bunch of this stuff is going to start. You watch this. So Italy starts flattening the curve. Italy is going to, you know, because they've done such draconian measures, they're going to have ventilators start to open up. And the United States is going to start buying ventilators from Italy. You watch. Other countries, we're in much better shape. No, we're not. We have more infected and dead than any other country except China. But. And we've done less. The, we are two weeks away from the arc of the fact that we've had our thumb up our ass. Professionals have done an amazing job. Yeah, in spite of you. Now, over the next week, 
in two weeks. It's going to be a very, very deadly period. Uh-huh. Fortunately. Yeah, we know. And there won't be enough ventilators. But we're going to make it so that we lose as few lives as possible. But, you're, and, but a lot of those deaths are because we won't have enough ventilators. And I think we're going to be successful. I think we already are successful. No, you're not. You don't know you're successful until you're over the hump. In that regard, when you look at that graph... We're positioning ourselves well, and we're going to do our best in this situation to at least be honest about it. Jesus Christ. And you gross. see all of the, the bumps, if you want to call it, at a very low level. The bumps. The bumps. That's, that's what's in all those refrigerator trucks in New York. Bumps. And you see a couple at a higher level, they were tough. Bigger bumps. You see all of those levels. You know, when you look at, and when you hear about Italy, and then you hear about France, and then you hear about, you know, what we have is- Yeah, they've already started the downslope of their curve. We have many Italys all over. We have- Yeah, that's why we have a federal government that says, shut it all down. We, they're like countries. California is a country. Yeah, and they went on and did it themselves. New York is a country. Yeah, they started asking other states and buying their own stuff. And they told you that if they buy up all the ventilators that are available, there will be none left for the Midwest when this hits. If you look at them from the standpoint of- Oh my God. What we're talking about, we- I don't know what you're talking about, man. I just know you're making weird, gropey gestures. Many like country spots. Many like country spots. Did you get that? Anybody got that on their bingo card? Summer hot spots. Summer hot. Summer cool. Summer number one with a with a rocket. Summer. The president. Act like it. And there's nothing we're going to do about it. One of the biggest surprises is Louisiana, because it started off so good, and then all of a sudden it, it started off so good, but then got up like it's a contagion. It, it wasn't like we had 20 years of COVID-19 sitting around and then all of a sudden they were kicking its ass and all of a sudden rocket, but we are going to went off like a rocket. I and have ventilators wherever we possibly can. Jeff, go ahead. Despite the Herculean effort of some of these companies to ramp up production as fast sure. as possible, sure. it still won't be enough. Well, New York wanted 40,000 ventilators. Yeah, because they got 7 million people. Okay, 40, And they're treating some people who are in Jersey Think of what 40,000 is. Yeah, we are. It's a pittance in terms of population. Uh, it's like cars. No, it isn't like cars. It's a big project. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cars in New York City. It's, a, it's an expensive product. I mean, some of them are- Not expensive. They have $7,000 ones. You know what? You'd have a lot more if you had actually maintained the ones that we had. 50, There's one in India. It's, it, it cost, you can run it off a cell phone, it costs $700. $1,000 a piece. I saw one the other day, 55000 That was before they start playing the games with supply and demand, okay? So the games with supply and demand. You mean other countries trying to buy them up so that their people don't die? You mean that kind of games? They're very, very, you call them luxury. Some are not. But frankly, these are very expensive. Luxury? Ventilators, luxury ventilators. Can you tell this guy has never slept a night on the same pillowcase in a row? Of products, these are very high tech projects. These are very, you know, I get the good ones and we send the broken ones to the poor cities. And products, and they take a period of time. We have thousands of them being built. Yeah. Thousands, not tens of thousands, and we need 116,000 to meet full demand. 116,000 new ones, not including the ones in circulation. Right now, some will be ready. And that doesn't include the ones we took away from others or we're running double. And we're going to have extra and we'll keep them at hospitals. But a lot of hospitals, a lot of states had the chance of getting ventilators. Yeah, to deal with uniform problems so, okay, New York City, terror target world over. New York, and New York government, the, the state government knows this. So they prepare 
for these kind of bioweapon attacks. They know the federal government has a certain response to it that will definitely come in if they were hit with a dirty bomb or if they had a biochemical attack or somebody tried to get anthrax or another coronavirus all over the city and they aerosolized a chemical, whatever. They know they have a certain number of things in their own hospitals. Then they have a certain number in reserve. But they also know the federal government has a program to, to add more to those. And they also know that when a chemical attack or a biological attack hits New York City, it won't hit the whole country at once. So they can reach out to Oregon, Texas, Florida and say, hey, any ventilators you have, send them our way to make up for the shortfall temporarily. They as a state don't have to prepare for a countrywide pandemic. That's the federal government's job. That's why they didn't buy 16,000 extra ventilators beyond the stockpiles that they have themselves. They turned those ventilators down for so they could spend their money on something else. Yeah, like roads and bridges, which kill more people if they're not maintained. And in a way, I understand that because who thinks a thing like this? It's not it's the federal government. Not a knock. The president. The if, pr uh, President Obama. That's why I put together a pandemic response team. That's why they gave it to you. That's why you turned it into five pieces of paper and shelved it. I'm told. Dipshit. Like perhaps New York, you can spend a billion dollars on ventilators and get 16,000 or a massive number of ventilators that they've been offered over the years. Or you can build a new bridge or road or something. A billion dollars for 16,000 ventilators. Mm. I'm going to go on, out on a limb and say that math doesn't add up. Thing. I mean, I understand how that works. I'm not no, you don't. blaming anybody. I'm yes, just you are. Saying they, You're saying it's the state's fault and you shouldn't have to come in and save them because what are you, the president or something? A lot of the states had chances of stockpiling a lot of ventilators. But they didn't need to stockpile them because if they get hit by a single thing that's not a federal emergency, they can borrow those things from other states that weren't hit because the chance of some terrorist dirty bombing the entire United States at once. God. They didn't do it. And I think we're doing a very good job. And no, you're not. Helping them out, please. Yes. No, you're not. There's going to be a shortfall. He asked you if you want to come clean and say there's going to be a shortfall. It's not, and you don't have the guts to do it. It's a very you fair blamed the states. Question. I understand that question very well. Yeah. No, you don't. On, on what you and the others have been saying today about it being a deadly week or two coming. Can you give us a sense of perhaps Dr. Burks of what that means sure. numerically? I'd like to ask also, yeah, I'd like to say we know pretty much the line of attack. We know the numbers, the numbers are the numbers. They seem to be checking out, unfortunately, or in some cases, you know, they're, they're on the low side, which we're very happy. We want to keep them on the very low side, and that's where we're headed. And I think that's maybe where we're headed. Why? You're not testing. You don't know. Th these are all the gray areas. Anybody who says, like, the, the states with low infection rate or whatever, those are only people going to the hospital. They have no idea. But I'd like to ask uh, maybe you and Tony, what are, what, where is the, where is the, the weak or the number of days of greatest attack. What Next week, you saw, you were there Tuesday. They did a presentation. How do you not see this every day? How have you not seen that everybody knows that the ramp is starting now? We're gonna start doubling in dead daily, probably Monday or Tuesday. It's gonna get worse on the 15th and 16th in New York City, and then other places have peaks afterwards. So the, the national peak is going to arc through mid to late April and go down and cascade down, and it ends about May 30th. How, who among us does not have this graph me memorized at this point? It hasn't changed since Tuesday. It will be our worst day. If the when can I say the day after our worst day, I can tell everybody to go back to work? There's not going to be more dead, so slightly less dead. It's possible to determine. I think that's what you're asking, right? And, and how many deaths exactly are you expecting? So as you can look in the places that are the most difficult hit right now, the Detroit area, the New York area, the Louisiana area, and we are doing it by the counties in those states because there are mostly it's met There's counties where nobody's in them. Metro areas and the bedroom communities around those metro bedroom communities. That's lovely. The bedroom community collection.
Burke's scarves. Areas, um, because people went to work and, and got exposed and came home and, and exposed other. If you look out in New York now, you see that it's in Long Island and it's out in Suffolk County and Nassau mm -hmm. County. Where, where the president said they might have to throw a net around New York and everybody skedaddled. All of those counties, Wayne and Oakland, they're all on the upside of their curve of mortality. So you know when you get to the peak, you come down the other side. You don't know when the peak is until days after. And when will that peak be? So by the- When will it be, Deborah? Tell them, we are watching the meeting happen. Uh, predictions that are in that healthdata.org, um, they're predicting in those three hot spots, all of them hitting together in the next six to seven days. Are you picking tens of thousands of deaths in that period of time? You can go to the website. It's variable. It's the Each IH. One of By the way, it's the IHME graphs that everybody else is using. It's just put on a different scale. Um, is the, it's embarrassing. Those communities is different, but you know where New York is. And they're all. By the way, the I uh, the uh, IHME um, things that she's referring to are based on perfect isolation, separation, and social distancing. Not a hair missed. And if you look at the line they have, there's this huge balloon around it of deaths and hospitalizations that, like, we don't know. It could be anywhere. Near, we're assuming the middle, How much the low middle, because it's perfect. It has been, and you know, what we're seeing today are the people who were infected two or three weeks ago. Right. He can't grasp that the people who are infected today will get our, our two or three weeks away from get, ending up in the hospital. If mitigation in New York worked, and we believe it is working, the cases are going to start to go down, but the mortality will be a lag behind that because of the comorbidities and other conditions. So that's why all of the predictions are that this next week, and I think we said this last Sunday when we talked about the charts, um, and it's difficult to do, and we tried to prepare the American people to understand that you have to, as much as you go up, you have to come down the other side because coming down is a reflection of the cases that were. The model that she is citing, just so you know, in this jibber jabber that she's throwing out, the model that she's citing, the IHME, um, it says that we are going to have the same number of deaths that we've had so far in one day, somewhere in the order of April 16th or 17th. One day. Everybody who's died so far, one day. Coming in before. Would you rather not say a number? I'd rather not say a number, but the numbers are available if you go to the website. I mean, you can see that there's several hundreds per day in New York. Um, and I think Governor and over 2000 in one day nationwide with best case scenario Coma. in one day, by the way, the next day, uh, isn't zero. It goes from 2200 dead to 2150 to 2100 to 2000. Then it goes back up because everybody starts blowing shit off. Has talked about that increasing still into the five, six, seven hundred range a day. In New York alone, look at him. He's so like, oh God, I hate this part. So, you know, that's very concerning to us. Yeah, um, it is. We again applaud the healthcare workers who are doing every single- Thank you guys for subscribing and for the patrons and all the support. And thank you guys for the ones who uh, yell weirdly Trumpy religious stuff at me and all your nonsense, bless your heart, you're very sweet. Uh, don't die in this. ...thing humanly possible to save more lives. And we are ensuring on a ventilator by ventilator, day by day, to get them there. So he hates her right now. That we can- Blow in my curve. When? Answer the day. So the day after, the day it stops going up and goes down, that's when I'm telling everybody to race out to church. Say, and we and can- get sick be there when they need it.
because we are supposed to be that group that comes in after all of the resources are exhausted. And we really applaud what Oregon did. No, you don't wait until the resources are exhausted before you get in. What? We really applaud what the governor is doing about he moving the between the states, between the different counties to bring them. What? Really? Did you say counties or countries? To New York, because that's what's needed today. What is? A different place will be needed tomorrow. I don't like this oh, boring, boring. Yeah, you said yesterday. Waddle, waddle. We had some concerns about Pennsylvania, Colorado, and Washington. Is this head made out of cotton candy? What's happening? Could you expand on that? We're watching them because they are starting to go on that upside of the curve. Mm-hmm. Um, we're hoping and believing that if people mitigate strongly the work that they did over the last two weeks will blunt that curve. Yeah, that's what, what Fauci's been saying. Just let him talk. You, those guys, Trump, and, Trump can leave. Pence can say a few things about coordination. You two tell everybody what they need to know about whether they need to wear a mask or how many dead or all those kind of things, and that's it. Like, you don't, there's no reason for this gab fest. And they won't. They're not working right now. Understand this. These, this is supposed to be the A team. Pence coordinates everything. He, he has to ask the president to okay st everything. Burks and Fauci are the executive decision makers on the healthcare aspect of it. And they're sitting up here talking out of their ass for an hour. Don't have the same upward slope and peak that New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and part of Rhode Island are having. So this is a very important, the next two weeks are extraordinarily important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think you've heard from Dr. Yeah, especially in the ventilator count. Dr. Fauci, from myself, from the president and the vice president, that this is the moment to do everything that you can on the presidential guidelines. This is the moment to not be going to the grocery store, not going to the pharmacy, but doing For everything you can to country. keep your family and your friends whole safe. Country. And that means everybody doing the six feet distancing, washing your hands. Yeah, she and, she and Fauci are basically trying to like, can we crowbar a national response about this now? Like, cause Trump's not gonna do it. So, I mean, ditto to everything that Dr. Burke said, but also to emphasize why it's so important to do that, because we're looking at three or four really key hotspots that are still going up. It's absolutely essential that the ones that are down at that lower level that Dr. Burke showed the other day, those communities where they're still going up, we've got to make sure we don't have multiple waves of peaks. Right. And those are the states that they were asking the president about earlier, where he said, wouldn't a nationwide um, stay at home order help? That's it. That's gonna be the answer to the question of when we can start pulling back. Because if you keep having multiple w peaks and different waves, that's gonna make it very difficult. Uh, we put your foot on the, ex uh, no, exactly what I said just before and I keep repeating. Just make sure everybody does the, at least the minimal amount of that physical separation. Because the Yeah, minimum. I like the sound of minimal. You know, like he's wagging his, his waddle. Chris has no place to go if you're physically separated. And, and one of the reasons that I keep talking about hydroxychloroquine is that the question that nobody ever asks Let's hear it. And the question that I most hate the answer to. Well, then why, why, do you, why are you mad that nobody wants to ask it? Is what happens if you do have a ventilator? What are your chances? And I just hope that. What? What if you do have a ventilator? What are your chances? What? Uh, oh, we're moving on to now. What if the ventilator kills you? Did you ever really think about that? Hydroxy, chloroquine. Maybe if we just drop a tablet of it in your ventilator and <laughs> wins, coupled with perhaps the Z pack, as we call it. As we call it? Why? Because you have a trouble with zithromycin? Is that why? Dependent totally on your doctors and the doctors there. 
Ask your doctor about the purple pill. Doc, does it come in suppository form? Everything's a suppository if you shove it up your ass. Because you know the You're so wise answer to that question. If what is the answer? You don't. You do have the ventilator. You know the answer to that question. What's the answer? And I hate giving the answer. What's the answer? So I don't want to get him there. I don't want to. Oh, I know what he's talking about. He's talking about the whole, like, um, the, the idea that um, people who get on a ventilator, the longer you're on a ventilator, the chances uh, are that you're going to die. That's what he's talking about. That's about length of time on the ventilator. You know how fast you'll die if you can't get a ventilator at all? So what is he hoping? People die quicker without one? Get them there. Uh, there's a possibility, a possibility. And I say it. What do you have to lose? I'll say it again. Yeah, what but that doesn't mean it's going to solve it. And it's certainly not going to solve it in the next 30 days. What will solve it is separation, is social distancing. Order the country to do a nationwide one. It doesn't hurt. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? If you tell the rest of those stupid ass states with next to no cases, but per capita, they're shooting through the roof. Take it. I really think they Just should. Just take a pill. Take it. Do it. Take it. But it's their choice. And if you die from it, it's your own shit. You know what I mean? We're at Jonestown for a reason. You don't have to drink the Kool-Aid, but if you're, if you're a person of faith, you'll drink it. It's the doctor's choice or the doctors in the hospital. But hydroxychloroquine, try it. No. If you'd like. Don't the try it. What? What? Thing. If you have a heart condition, I understand. Probably you stay away from the ZPAC. But that's. What is the whispering? Take the pill. Just eat the pill, America. Shh. Take the pill. An antibiotic. It can clean out the lungs. The lungs are a point of attack for this horrible virus. But when you have a ventilator, don't ask the answer because I hate it. If you have... He means if you, the longer you stay on a ventilator, the chances are that you're not going to survive. The problem is that's not relative to the medication working. The ventilator is there so you can have enough oxygen in yourself. Like, it, I mean, this is goofy. And it's don't get on a ventilator. Ventilators kill. By not getting enough, is this him setting up? I didn't send enough ventilators because ventilators are the reason people are dying. Working beautifully. I don't like the answer. Because what the fuck? What is this creepy bullshit? Uh, okay, news people, are we calling this a change in tone? <sighs> is he going to start singing happy birthday, Mr. President? What is this? Not a very high percentage. Jesus. So I want to keep them out of ventilators. I want to keep them if we, if this That's why I'm not giving enough ventilators. Because I don't want you to die on a ventilator. This is not good. Bug works. It will be not a game changer because that's not a nice enough term. It will be wonderful. It'll be so beautiful. Beautiful, a miracle. Take the drug. Let me Yes, if any therapeutic fixes this, it's great. It's not a miracle. It's science. But you have to test it first because some of your followers took it and died. It'll be a gift from him. What a weird, bizarre, bullshit answer. This is creepy. Heaven, if it were. An answer from heaven. Because when people go into those ventilators, you know the answers, I know the answers, and I'm glad you don't write about it. Uh, Mike, please. What? Mike, say something that sets this back on track. What is this? Jesus, Mike. I don't know how you follow that. I, I've Suddenly, I'm on Mike Pence's side. I don't know how this happened. But, well, you've heard from the experts what our task force has heard. Um, it's going to be a difficult week for the American people. Yeah, it already is. Did you hear him talk? Don't go on a ventilator. Take the pill. I bought 29 million of them. It has to work. 
if we give it to enough people who recover naturally, it'll look like it works, and then I'll come out a hero. Jesus Christ, President Vincent Price. You will see testing increased around the country, and so cases are going to continue to rise. Yeah. Here's, uh, again, Pence, the bar is so low that Pence seems like a normal human being. Look, and he's livid right now. I know I'm projecting. Across America. And before I give a few facts relevant to an earlier question. Why start now? Ventilators, let me just, let me add my voice to what the president just said and what all the physicians. Please don't do a creepy whisper. Who's spoken has said. What is it on? Just take the pill. Just take it. What have I got to lose? If you have a heart attack, uh, I'll say you were just weak. And if you heal naturally, I'll say it was because of the drug. Uh. Even though uh, we see the losses rising in the days ahead, do not be discouraged. Because there is evidence across the country that Americans have been putting the social distancing and mitigating. Right. So he's not agreeing with Trump. He's skipping back to Fauci and Burks. ...into practice, and it is making a difference. We are seeing it in this the... This is just... I'm still not over the weird whisper. ...new cases that are being reported. Because remember, people... Families that experience loss up to this day and in, and in the next week, uh, have a loved one who contracted the coronavirus, in most cases, more than two weeks ago. In many cases, before social distancing and mitigation efforts were put into effect. And so we, we want to encourage you, believe in the president's coronavirus guidelines for America. Go to coronavirus.gov, print them off again, put them on the refrigerator and remind yourself to put them into practice. These guys are, this is a desperate cry for help. Pence, Fauci, and Burks are all trying to circumvent the president's weird, goofy idea that there'll be a pill that will magically make it, it's gonna pop and we'll all go be golfing by June. And they're trying to tell everybody, look, the only thing that's gonna fix this, cause we don't have a treatment that we know works and we don't have a vaccine is if we all stay inside long enough for the arc of this disease to naturally work its way through. That's it, that's the only option. That's what's working in Spain, that's what's working in Italy, that's what worked in South Korea. That they're testing, isolation, and social distancing. That's the only thing that's worked. And the president's like, maybe they could just take a pill. Like one time I was with like a couple of these hookers and the next day it burned when I pee and I got a pill and then I was back to hookers again in a week. On the subject of ventilators, if I can amplify the point the president made, our team at FEMA is doing a remarkable job working with governors, state health officials, and local hospitals, particularly focused on our priority areas. We'll refer to the New York metro area, um, which includes uh, New Jersey and, and Connecticut. We're focused on the New Orleans metro area. All the hot spots, getting, uh, making sure that you have some ventilators in reserve for where it, so they don't have to transition them. That's fine, say that. Louisiana, we're focusing on Detroit, we're focusing uh, on Chicago. These are the areas where we see the significant rise uh, in cases. And we are, we are surging supplies, specifically ventilators, but all uh, personal protective equipment uh, from FEMA uh, to those areas. And, and just- Because you don't have enough. And if you send them too much and they get used up or somebody gets put on a ventilator because all the other stuff that happens happens, you won't be able to get it back. I'll give you uh, a couple of examples. I spoke to governors in New York, New Jersey, Louisiana, uh, Massachusetts, Michigan, and Maryland today uh, alone. And in those cases, uh, Governor Cuomo is actually assessing all of the available ventilators. We've sent 4,400 ventilators already to New York. Um, as, uh, as has already been referenced, they're going to receive a shipment of over 1,000 from overseas. And, and allow me to say... 140 from Oregon, and they won't have enough. 
as I told her personally today, uh, uh, the uh, governor of Oregon, Governor Kate Brown, her unilateral decision to send 140 ventilators because Oregon, they felt Oregon today is in a place where they could give those ventilators to New York. And then they'll have some on order that they'll get there 25 days later, and they're hoping that matches up with their arc of contagion. To me, it was in the very highest American it tradition is. of loving your neighbor. It's beautiful, um, and, and when we I appreciate it, and it has nothing to do with anything the task force is doing. Governor Cuomo, Mr. President, circumvented and realized he's on his own. You told him he's on his own and he had to go work out stuff. And yeah. He actually told me they never asked Oregon for the ventilators. And Governor Brown hadn't even called him to tell him that she was doing that. It really is remarkable. When I talked to Governor Hogan today, and we, President and I will be speaking to all of America's governors on Monday again, I, I told him how inspired I was and how he ought to spread the word to other governors in areas where they can where they can spare resources to be joining with us at the federal level. And, and yeah, this is the plan that New York had and why they don't buy 16,000 ventilators that they have to maintain. Because in a normal situation where they're hit by a chemical attack or they have an outbreak of a disease, it doesn't spread nationwide and they can borrow them for uh, temporarily from other states, just like they're doing right now. And providing them to stay. It's in the case of a national and, in and indeed world pandemic that the federal government is so supposed to maintain a stockpile overage for this. Trump blew it off. At the point of the need. But just a few for instances, as we track New Jersey, as I told Governor Phil Murphy, we deployed 200 uh, ventilators to New Jersey uh, today. Louisiana, where we're, we're monitoring literally hour by hour what's taking place in New Orleans with, with some encouraging news, but still great challenges. Uh, yesterday, you heard the president say that we deployed 330,000 gowns that have been delivered to the public health systems and hospitals there, 200 ventilators. I spoke to Governor Charlie Baker today and was able to inform him. We're watching Boston area very closely. 100 ventilators are deploying uh, today. I spoke. See, this is valuable information. This is fine. Like, I, you know, again, no fan of Mike Pence in general, just, uh, you know, his politics and I differ, but I have no problem with his managerial leadership skills or the information that he's giving out. This is exactly what he should be doing. There is no reason for Trump to be involved in any of this at all. To uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer today, uh, Detroit is experiencing uh, a significant number of cases. You mean all metro areas in the United States are just ticking time bombs at this point? We're watching it carefully, and today uh, FEMA directed 300 uh, ventilators uh, to Michigan. Uh, again, um, uh, as the president said, we're, we're all working our hearts out. But the, what I want to say to American families and what I want to say to health care workers uh, is that uh, we are going to identify the resources, leave no stone unturned, and we are going to focus resources on those areas in the order that they emerge. Now, the last thought is back on mitigation. We are hoping that we do not see other major cities in the country experience what. Or dozens of small towns. That's the nightmare. But uh, Seattle. Cities have infrastructure for dealing with this. They have cops and EMTs and other f facilities. They've got big hotels they could convert in the most horrifying circumstances. Small towns don't, and everybody knows everybody. And if they, you aren't telling them to not go to church, they're going to go. And if one person has it, the whole town has it. We experienced what uh, a greater New York City area is experiencing, what New Orleans is experiencing, and that's all in the hands of the American people today. Uh, and uh, so I just want to encourage you, coronavirus.gov put into practice the president's coronavirus guidelines, and you will do your part to save lives, protect the American people, and ensure that we will have the resources to meet this moment wherever the need should arise. And he never had to look down except to check a couple of their priority moments for how many ventilators went out. Congratulations, Mike Pence. This is the day you became president. Mr. A loan program that got up and running yesterday. But we're hearing from a lot of small business owners a lot of concerns about whether they will get this money. Um, some say some of the banks weren't ready yesterday to start processing loans. 
Some banks are layering. So, and some we're banks way are ahead of schedules. The banks have been great. No, we're not ahead of schedule. There is no schedule. JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America. They're way behind. A bunch of them. Wells Fargo doesn't know what, how to do it. They're, the mitigation, they're just, their regular loaning process is already in place. And they do a bunch of them anyways. So if you cleared and you were okay for those kind of things, you would get one. This isn't even part of the SBA's program yet. They're so far ahead. No, they're not. This you is got money you don't even know you have. Typical. I don't know why all these small businesses are whining. With you in particular. Uh, we hear they're behind. They're not behind. It's been a flawless, it's been flawless so far, far beyond our expectations. You should say, I hear you're doing well, but maybe, I don't even hear of any glitch. They've done because you don't listen. He'd never even heard there were problems with tests as the governors were telling them about problems with testing. Tens of dollars of loans to small business. And these are great loans. These are loans that get immediately paid off. These are loans that get businesses back. I wish you could ans ask a question where something's working so well. Now, maybe things won't work well, and I don't mind that kind, but where something's working so well, and you ask a question in such a negative way, uh, it's doing great. Yeah. It's a negative situation. Go ahead. What's it's a pandemic. What? How, why can't you just make it sound like daffodils? Doing great. Really good. Maybe it won't in two weeks and I'll respond differently, but it's doing great. You know it. And so does everyone else. Everyone's shocked how well it's doing. No one's shocked how well anything is doing. We're going to we're heading into the biggest mass death casualty in our country's history in the next two weeks. No one's happy. No one's excited. Nobody's jamming. Nothing's rocking. The, the, the language of this dude. Mentioned in the, in the Who past, did? Dr. Burks. Yes. Uh, some demographics. Such she's, a de she's probably a Democrat. I probably she got his copy. I don't even know her. Seeing that uh, men might be more susceptible to the virus, seeing in Europe, uh, more uh, cases among uh, the between 30 and 50 class. Uh, has the data that you've seen in the past two weeks changed that assessment? Uh, are men more susceptible? What are I don't think it's changed much, has it? No, it's same pattern as Europe. Same pattern. Same answer that, so that we've means, given you. That for includes the last folks with between month. 30 and 50 month. being more adversely affected than what we've seen in, in Asia? Tell me. Hate these questions. Oh, I, I, tomorrow I'll bring you all the graphs back so you can see it. We can bring an updated graph, but it's very similar. Yeah, nothing has changed since Tuesday. Uh, Mr. President, a few days ago you talked about possibly restricting flights from hotspots. Where yeah. are you on that? Where's your We're looking at it very seriously. Right now, uh, we're dealing with governors. We're dealing with airlines. We're dealing with a lot of different factors. It's a very difficult decision. Uh, we're also doing testing, getting into planes, very strong testing. No, we're not. Uh, states are doing testing of people that leave planes because they don't want to have people come. Yeah, the states are taking care of it. You're not doing anything. And who are infected. No. So Did you see the cattle stampede at O'Hare when you said people got to get back into the country, we're going to shut it down. Understanding. And still there are flights coming in. That and the level of testing has been enormous. Okay. And some states are saying you have to go in quarantine for two weeks. Uh-huh. If you come from certain areas. Yeah. So that's a good idea. Knowing that we're working with the governors. Mr. President, what kind of what kind of test when you say testing, do you mean domestic travel or people coming in from outside both, the country? Both. Some states are doing when they land, they're doing very strong, very powerful testing. Very strong, powerful tests. Not these weak, wussy tests that never get picked for dodgeball. Please go ahead. Some airlines, sir, and they say they don't know what you're the talking strong barrel tests. You have to, you have, it's, a, it's a deadlift test, and if you can't lift it up, we put you in a COVID chamber. Okay, well, then you'll check up again. One Very strong. last question on ventilators. Governments are doing it too, our government. Go ahead. One last question on ventilators. The governor of New York said that he received donation in ventilators from Jack Ma of Alibaba, which I think is your friend. Uh, would you no. call on the business community to donate uh, ventilators, not necessarily to New York, but other yeah, states like Louisiana? Yeah, sure, I'll call him, I'll tell him, whatever. Yep. Oh, Jack. Jack, do you have his number? Do you want to tell him? Should I tell him? Uh, is a friend of mine, and he's uh, made it very possible to get about a thousand ventilators from China. 
but that was from him and my other friend. It was uh, really a gift, and uh, we appreciate it very much. It was very nice of them. They were going to do it. it. Had nothing to do with you. They do shit tons of business in New York. Right. I think we've had enough. Uh... <laughs> well, I think uh, that's it. Uh, screwed that pooch enough. Uh, it stopped squealing. Let's. Uh, you know that was so awesome. Let's do this again tomorrow. We'll be seeing you very soon. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that... Uh, you guys will have a bunch more questions for me then. You know that all of us are going to be working very hard. We're working very hard. We are really coming up into a time that's going to be very... Uh, oh, my God. Um, Look, right. death. There's probably a time like we haven't seen in this country, wouldn't you say? I mean, I don't think... Since the Civil War. We've seen a time like this in the country. And uh, we're getting to that, uh, that point where it's going to really be uh, some very bad numbers. We want to keep those numbers a lot lower than they would have been, and we will do that. We have tremendous talent working. We have tremendous people, and that includes governors. That includes everybody. Everybody's working. But unfortunately, we're getting to that time when the numbers are going to peak, and it's not going to be a, a good-looking situation. A good-looking situation. I really believe we probably have never seen anything like these kind no. of numbers, maybe during the war, during the, uh, the war. a world war. The war, the, the world war? The, the world war. A world war one or a world two or something, but uh, something. this is a war. All no, it's a pandemic. To itself. and it's, No, it isn't. Uh, it's a terrible thing. It's not, it's not some macho gab fest. It's a disease. The solution is a cure. You're not punching the virus in the face. There's not going to be any Uncle Sam posters. The people who are helping us, the medical uh, personnel, nurses, doctors, EMTs, first responders, you don't need to elevate them to soldier status to make them worthwhile. They're already worthwhile. This is their zone. Uh, we will be seeing you soon. Your analogy is adorable. We'll keep you totally abreast. Uh, we're also going to be releasing new ventilator numbers because we have a lot of them coming and a lot of them going to different locations. And Mike was going to mention them, but I had to jump in and whisper for a half an hour about how you should take a drug. Take the drug, America. Drink the Kool-Aid. Drink it. Drink it up. Drink it, Kool-Aid. Drink it, Kool-Aid. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. They all have to wait until he leaves. You got to go out behind him. Picking up your stuff. Yeah, all the notes she didn't get to use. Jesus. Guys, kids, people. Oh, my God. That was one of the weirdest ones so far. I mean, I don't, I do not understand the whole whisper fest thing. Like, how do you, how does that not make the news everywhere? I mean, I mean, here's why it won't. So I, that's, that's a clip you would see on Chris Hayes. I would, I would say, um, uh, and like, he's one of those things that like, if he still did like thing one and thing two, um, this would be both, but I don't, oh, thank you, Joyce. And thank you guys for the super chats and the and the people who've joined Patreon this run. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Later on today at six o'clock, my time, about an hour change, I'm going to um, have Chris Gore on from Film Threat, and we're going to talk indie films and stuff you can watch during quarantine. Stuff that you know make you maybe glad you're not going outside. Some horror and sci-fi, and maybe some stuff that will you know make you dream of a future that's more dystopian even than the one we're living in now. Who knows? Um, but we're going to, uh, at six o'clock, we're going to be doing that my time. But, um, I want to thank you guys, uh, who both in this show and in the radio show earlier, uh, joined Patreon, started supporting. Thanks for all the, the love. And then, uh, all the kooky people who, um, are in there, um, mostly from Facebook, uh, can go pound sand, uh, your children, your ruler is terrible. He's, uh, the worst leader that we've ever had. He's an example of uh, an infantile man boy, second generation rich kid, um, s toddler stomping his way through a, a genuine crisis. Uh, he is a flatulent, uh, rude, 
smelly, according to all reports, um, intellectually inferior madman. And he is not my fool, he's your fool. And I have utter respect for the presidency, our democracy, our country, and our fellow man. And even though I think you are a complete moron for even thinking for a second he's a capable human being in any facet of his life, uh, failed marriages, failed businesses, never ran his company on a day of profit, not a once. Um, I still don't want you to get sick. So cover your face when you go outside, wear a mask um, so you don't touch your face. If you touch a surface that has the disease on it, wear uh, glasses if you're going out. Uh, if you wear glasses already, great. If not, wear sunglasses and uh, wash your common surfaces. And if uh, you've been in contact with anybody who's sick or you may have been exposed to it, quarantine yourself for the good of everybody around you, your family, your friends, and the people you do care about, even if you hate my guts. And uh, I'll see you guys in about an hour. Um, and and to the chat room, um, uh, Jim and Carl and Can't Stop Lying and Maria and Eileen and uh, uh, Marianne and Amy Kay, Joyce, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jill Carter, as always. You're so terrific. Uh, thank you for your support. Gruber Lovin. Um, Brian, uh, you know, it's one of the good ones on uh, Facebook. Um, yeah, we may have to just kind of, you might get jettisoned Facebook. Yeah, because you it, there's it's just too easy for them to come in and just dump a pile of propaganda on. So, uh, I'm, yeah, not a fan. But uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of somebody else. Stay the fuck home. See you in a bit.